This is the home of Alan Robson's Night Owls. With the voice of the North. Greatest Hits Radio. Aha, uh-huh. so we have one more thing before we dive into the calls, and that is Florida. I don't know whether you've noticed, it is one of the places that we in Britain go to. It's one of the the biggest tourist go-tos that we have uh, across the North Country particularly, but from all over the place. And at the moment, we've got a lot of our friends and family in Florida. Now, if you have family there right now, especially as, you know, the, the Hurricane Dorian has just gone across the Bahamas, which means it's almost inevitable that it's going to hit Florida. If you've got any family there, that you think wouldn't mind uh, having a chat with us, please pick up your telephone and give Nicola a call on 0191 488 3188. Pass their telephone numbers on. Uh, over there at the present moment, it's about 5 in the afternoon, 519, and we'll give them a call. And if they're not halfway around a roller coaster in a theme park, maybe they can have a, a quick two-minute chat to let us know what the weather's like there, what people are doing in preparation for it, uh, and or... Just what's going on with the brand new Star Wars uh, town or city that's just been released about two days ago to the general public. A big Star Wars land they have just uh, announced. So, So everybody goes to this new thing that's just been built. Will it be still there next week? Well, nobody knows at this stage, but we're uh, more than a tad concerned about our friends in uh, in the Sunshine State. So if you've got friends or family over there and you think they'd be willing to have a chat with F. Blader Square... Please give Nicola a call right now. 0191 488 3188. Our first caller tonight is in Windsor. Hello, David. Hello, how are you? I'm very well. Thanks for coming on. Uh, we've been talking a bit about tech. Yeah. And this is the only bit of information that I have, and it sounds completely unlikely. You've got your great uncle's phonograph that he brought back from the Boer War. Yeah, it's um, <laughs> it's, it's great, great, great. Uh, he's a great, great uncle, right. I think, by marriage. Uh-huh. Um, and I got it sort of via my grandfather. Ended up with it, my father, and uh, uh, I've got it now. Um, whether he <laughs> brought it back, it was, it was made in South Africa, according to the label and the license. But whether he right. brought it back or that was a coincidence, and he bought it in England when he came back. I just um, think he's the funkiest geezer on the planet. Absolutely, yeah. <laughs> he, um, he, I, I, we've got I've got photos of him and and sort of some of yeah. his bits of his uniform and medals and things like that. And he, there's a newspaper cutting about when he went off to, to fight in the Boer War. Right. And uh, he was given, um, sort of my whole family from concert, so he was he was given a, a purse of sovereigns by the townspeople of Shotley Bridge right. uh, for, for having gone off to fight in the war voluntarily. And um, when he came back, he decided he would buy the latest piece of technology, which was uh, a phonograph. So it's it's hand, hand-wound. Uh, and right, right. it plays um, cylinders instead of flat discs. It's with oh. wax cylinders. Um, it's got two volume settings. You've either got the little horn attached to it or a massive, great, great big one. <laughs> uh, that's how you turn it up. And um, it's, uh, yeah, it plays these crackly, crackly cylinders that are two two minutes, ten seconds long oh, is the, the longest you can get on them. Uh, and I've, uh, we had about 100 of the cylinders. I've still got about 100 of them. Right. And... Um, because they're made of wax, they can get attacked by mould and mildew, and right, all, right. all the cylinders are being totally attacked by the, the mould, right. um, and they're completely wrecked, they're unplayable. Um, but I've just discovered that there's a company that makes reproduction cylinders for phonographs out of out of some sort of modern hardware in right, plastic. Right. Yeah. Um, and they've got quite a few stock ones, and it's mainly sort of stuff from that era, you know, Alexander's right. Ragtime Band and things like that. Oh, but you can, you can pay them to, to do you a custom cylinder of any bit of music of your of your choice. How good is that? Uh, and so I've been trying to think. I want something totally incongruous that would never have been played <laughs> on, a, on a phonograph. But it's got to be a song that's less than, uh, less than uh, two minutes, ten seconds long. Uh, and at the moment, right. I'm toying between Portsmouth by Mike Oldfield, uh, but I think what I'm going to go for is song two by Blur, which is exactly two minutes long. That is perfect. Um, I think playing that on a on a 120 year old phonograph. Because uh, what you could fun. do, you know, if you had a, 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 a my dinner party, showing off my fine, a great, yeah, great, yeah, great, 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 great
I don't think they had any talent at all. They've obviously ripped this one off yeah, and yeah, you, you wind up the gramophone yeah. to play it. That's really funny. Yeah, that's what I'm going to get, I think. Brilliant. Eh? Yeah. I just pictured this idea of a... Because, I mean, let's face it, the Boer War was a bloody, gory, nasty mess. Yeah. Didn't have any clear-cut winners to any large extent. Just a lot of people died. Yeah. Florence Nightingale's time for people, if you want to picture what you know, men and women dressed like in the day. And then coming back on the boat, this bloke with a... He's, he's already got his kid bag over one shoulder, but on the other shoulder, yeah. he's got his music. Yeah, absolutely. Absolute respect for that, man, absolutely. Yeah, it was supposed to be like the, the iPod. It'd be the, the <laughs> closest you would get to an iPod of, in, in those days, you know. It was the, yeah. And everybody would be hanging out on street corners listening to his cylinder. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's fantastic. Hey, great story, David. Thank you right. for sharing so much. Bless you, man. All the best. Bye bye. Now, David obviously goes, everybody that rings in and comes onto the show goes in the hat for one of our t shirts. Uh, It will be selected at random by a random number generator at the end of the show. And uh, what a great call to start us off with. What bit of tech have you got from maybe yesteryear? Does it still work? I love the idea that back then, if you wanted your music to be a bit louder, you didn't get a bigger speaker. Stuck a bigger horn on it. You had a little horn. If you, just wanted to, if you were in the trench, you didn't want them Turks to hear you. Uh, that's if you were in the in the Boer War, uh, or maybe you didn't want to hear uh, the the your rival troops in the next trench along. Uh, amazing, absolutely amazing. The uh, uh, you should just put the little horn on. <laughs> Love the idea that you because. We love our music so we create this hits radio family. You we love the music that we play so much that you want everybody to to share it. And there must have been people back then that were similarly driven, you'd have thought. Oh one nine one four double eight three one double eight. Now don't forget, if you want to text me, I know a lot of you are still texting me somewhere else, but if you want to text me where I actually am, text the word Alan plus your message. To 61054, 61054. That's how you get a message to me, and we want to know all about the tech stuff. Now, talk about tech that's gone walkies. Heard an awful story earlier on today. Tracy's here to tell me all about it. Hi, Tracy. Hi, Alan. Hello, darling. And now, you sent me a, a little email, and best way to deal with this is obviously to get you on and tell us uh, the whys and wherefores. What exactly happened? Um, my mum and dad were, were sleeping um, while well, somebody sh- uh, broke into my dad's shed and stole his two classic BSA motorcycles. Oh, my God. Um, my dad is 70 years old right. and, he's bl- and he's blind and it's his only hobby. Right. And it, this has been, what, seven weeks tomorrow now that they were stolen on the 9th of July. Right, and where from? From Framwell Gate Moor in Durham. In Durham, right, OK. And I, I'm worried that it's affecting his health and we really want to sort of have it make a plea to mm. have them returned or any information that anybody's got. Yeah. We're, put, we're putting out a £500 reward. Right. Leading to the return of the motorcycle. Uh-huh. The thing is, they've been gone a while, which makes it, it... I mean, they could be anywhere on planet Earth now. Yeah. This is the truth of it. I hope they're not, but they could be. And the thing is, somebody somewhere, some decent individual, an actual proper human being, will know something about this yeah. and might be able to pass it on to the police. If you don't want to go to the police, come to us. We'll pass it on to the police. Uh, if you know anything about these BSA motorcycles, the gentleman is getting on in years and he's got no sight. This is his great passion, his two pet BSA motorcycles that he kept in his shed. Uh Never yeah, the... one's, a, one's a red BSA C15 and the other's a grey BSA right. Bantam D3. Right, and if you're in the business of, of bikes and to sell them, you'd have to be, really, I think, uh, you will recognise a red or a grey BSA. They're, they don't come around every day. So if anybody knows anything about this at all, I would love to think we would we'd be able to find it. But seven weeks in... As I say, yeah. it means you, they could even be out the country. Right? It's been shared on social media, on Twitter and Facebook right. every single day since it happened. Right, and £500 um, reward £500. to anybody that can point us in the right direction. Night Owls, have a think about this. If you know anything about it, tell me, and I'll make sure that I make enough noise about it. It's scummy. What kind of security did he have? Was it just like a basic shed in the back garden kind of thing? 
it's kind of at the side of the house at the back. Uh, right. so it's just a, a shed. Um, yeah. But they, they, they broke the locks off and got yeah. in. Things like that, and I know it's easy to be wise after the event, just things like that, you think maybe you need a garage or you need a, a, a proper secure somewhere, you know, for yeah. for stuff like that. But bless him. I hope, let's hope we can get uh, any kind of information back. We'll keep our fingers crossed, Tracy. Thank you very Thank much you. for getting in touch. Appreciate it. OK. We'll, thanks, we'll thanks do what much. we can. Bye-bye. Keep your eyes open, night elves. That really is something that we'd we'd love to sort out and uh, Tony the taxi driver has been in touch talking about roofers you know the one that had a poo up there on the roof says I've never had a roofer do a uh, uh, a shoddy job (laughs) we expected something like that coming in and uh, you know George from Whitley Bay has been on you know these viewers that you, you would put a circular like kind of clip in that had little slides on it and you'd press the button down you'd Oh, it's the Louvre. Oh, it's a Jean's Laser. Oh, it's a Frenchman. Um, and is that really a big end? George Whitley Bay says they were called stereo slide viewers. And he sent a picture of the, the... Hang on, let me have a look see if that's what they were. Oh, the ones I remember didn't look like that, mind. Uh, I'm, I'm not doubting that they did the same thing. What were they called, though? Don't remember the names. Uh, oh, I've just got for Christmas my stereo slide viewer. Uh, great to hear you back. Fantastic show as always. Kind regards, George. Cheers, George. Is there another name for those those imagey things? If you know, pick up your telephone and give us a call. Quick piece of music now. Oh, my goodness. I haven't heard this in the longest time. Love it. And this is what I wish you for the next 12 months. Uh, nice as that with a little look, Paul McCartney and Wings. I remember back in those you know, days of rampant kids saying the wrong things and learning how to swear really properly, the, the change of a single letter uh, completely changed that song to a generation back in the day. Anyway, let's crack on. We have Linda, who is in North Shields. Hello, Linda. Hello, Alan. Hi. Hello, my love. What you got for us tonight, then? I was just going to mention, you know, you were talking about the little wheels that you looked well well into, the little machines yeah. you got for Christmas. Well, I got one, and it was one of my, my favourite toys. Well, this was way back in the 70s. <laughs> what was on the and slides, was, though? Um, different things that were in, like, sort of 3, 3D. Right. Um, and, I mean, I had different ones. I mean, well, there were stories, maybe, of, like, Alice in, in uh, Wonderland, but it was <sighs> called, like, a Viewmaster. Yeah, that's the and very word. Little, is that it? That's right, and, definitely. Oh, yeah, and I remember looking at it, and I think they had a little clip on, on like, the right-hand side. You could, like, sort of push it down for the next slide, and right. I loved those. Yeah, I just thought I'd tell you just yeah, to you, put you, your mind at rest. You, it was like looking through binoculars, but on the right-hand oh, side, it had, like, yeah. a little clicky thing, and you'd it go... Did, <coughs> and you put it down to the next one, and you put it down, and I loved it. And, and I'm probably ashamed to say I still have it somewhere. This is, like... 40 years later, but I love that. <laughs> I must look look it out and play with it again, but I love it. Because yeah. the thing that I don't know whether you... you it depends on uh, on your vintage, Linda, but I can <laughs> remember when I was just like a little tiny kid, there was no such thing as video. Television no. was relatively in its infancy. and it, exactly. it, it was around the time when... Uh, before you went to bed, you had to sing the national anthem and wait for the dot. <laughs> Do you remember yes, the little yes. dot? I remember the little dot. <laughs> and you were so desperate to stay up because it was school the next day. You'd, you'd wait yeah. till the very last. You'd wait Ooh. till the very last. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I remember. Happy days. But I used to, but at Christmas, I got a projector with uh-huh. with a strip of slides, like um, probably had seven on. And right. you pushed the, but you had to do the whole thing manually. It wasn't like clicky would have been better, but you yes. you pushed the first thing on, then you had to kind of get them centrals so that you could read what the words said. And it would be Mickey Mouse and Goofy having some kind of conversation. Then you'd have to push the next one in and yeah. then read that. And they told the story, and it was the nearest thing to, to a movie you could get. Back oh, then. it was good though. It was lovely. We enjoyed yeah. it. Didn't we? You know, it was yeah, happy times. Round about the same time, my dad discovered that you could get one of those cameras with with the old Laurel and Hardy films and play them, but there was no sound. Ah, oh, right. Like a little, little camera and projector 
outfit. I know that there's probably people that have got these things on collection out there, which uh, yes. would be fabulous. But but back then, you said, do you want to do you want to watch some Laurel and Hardy? Well, <gasps> hey, you, well, you just would if you were a kid, wouldn't you? you know? Well, yeah, yeah. Oh, I mean, they had great toys then, though. You know, <laughs> I mean, you had your um, um, spyroglass thing, which is probably coming back now when things and um, I, I did hate that. Mind. I think, yeah, I did yeah. hate that, Linda, because me parents bought me. Not a spirograph, but it was one of the other knockoff cheaper toys. Right. You know, where somebody would seen it, uh, one of these spirographs and thought, I could do that. And they'd, yeah. they'd come up with a one that was not remotely as, as clever nor as interesting. <laughs> and I, I ended up getting that. So anything down that road just completely switched me off. Because boys yeah. were expected to play with either Lego or, yeah, Lego, yes. or, or that, that metal one, Meccano. Yes, I never liked McCarnum. I was never bothered about that, yeah. But, yeah, but that's, toys Tories were sexist there, then, though. Oh, they were, yes. They yeah, wanted yeah. all the boys to be mechanics, so there's, yeah. there's your metal bit, the nuts and bolts, off you go. Yes. I, I was... And then all the girls, it was Barbie dolls <laughs> and Tammy and... Tammy and... <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. it was like, this is... I tell you what, here's a, a, a little girl's cookery set so that they'll yeah. be able to have their husband's dinner on the table. <laughs> you know, it's, they weren't even... They weren't even uh, Honest about it, they were just no. That's what girls do. They do that. Yes. This is yes. what because yes. even even at school we used to do metal work, but all yes. the girls used to do domestic sciences. It was so, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Very sexist and like so. work and yeah. Because <laughs> I mean, if you think yeah. of it now, you'd never get away with it for five minutes, would you? It would be oh, like, well, hang on. No, you'd be up for no, no. Nah, what about couldn't. Pauline? She wants to be a welder. <laughs> That's I what it is like right now. On. This isn't fair. This is, you know, <laughs> yeah, sexist. Oh, yes, exactly. So do you have any yeah. old technology now, Linda, that you've kind of kept from back in the day? Or? The Viewmaster's the main one. I've still got an um, Etch-a-Sketch somewhere. I remember me um, oh, Etch-a-Sketch. Right, yeah. Oh, yes, I like that. The only thing about Etch-a-Sketch, if you did a person, they had a square yeah. face. I know, you couldn't do it. <laughs> and I tried my best to get it round, it wouldn't go round. No, <laughs> no, not at all. I think you can do round ones now on the modern ones. You probably won't, yeah, yeah, but that was like the old, you know. The but old it was like, I've, days, I've spent but... four hours doing this picture, and you'd look at it and you'd go, what a mess. <laughs> <laughs> what a mess. But of course, every parent has to go. Oh, that's lovely! Son. Oh, what a lovely! You know, and I thought I'm going to rub this out. <laughs> well, the, the good thing was you just had to do that little shaky thing, and it was gone forever. Oh, and it was gone within seconds. I thought, oh, this is quick. I'll just rub it out now. Start again, you know. But, and you uh, mentioning that's just reawoken something to do with iron filings. I remember this thing where you could do pictures using like a magnetic pencil. That moved oh. iron filings, and uh, you could make the beards move in the in the Ooh, the tassels. Think of that, right? Kind of moved. To think. It was iron filings under under like a, a some kind of was it like cover. sort of magnet type. Oh, yeah, so you know. used the magnet to, to paint yeah. the pictures with the with the iron filings. To be honest, in modern day parlance, if you had to play. Call of Duty, where you're leading a team of four people into a, a foreign country to save the world, or or you've got a bucket full of iron. You, you wouldn't bother with it with a fight. You wouldn't bother you. with it, you know. I don't no, think so, but, I mean, in, in that it was good. You know, it was good fun, and I think they were strong toys, and they were made to last. And mm. you know, now it's just uh, no, no happy days. It was just as I say when you've mentioned about Viewmaster. You know, I mentioned it. I thought, oh yes. I thoroughly enjoyed that. Brilliant. And right. even after the first Christmas, I kept, you know, the next Christmas and the Christmas, I'd still get that out, and it was, oh, I loved that. Yes. Yeah. I was fine to still. No, it, was, it was one of those things that you sometimes see now, as I say, in, usually in boot sales or occasionally mm. on these antique telly shows. And yes, uh, yes. Kean Forrest Hall says it was the Viewmaster, the round mm -hmm. disc with lots and lots of, yeah. of different pictures. Quite right. And you mentioning the toys were well made. I remember when they invented a, an extra large toy car wagon digger called Tonka. Yeah. Tonka, 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 Tonka trucks. Yeah. And it said, yeah. this is unbreakable. Blimey, we tried. <laughs> We <laughs> tried. As <laughs> soon as anybody says this is one of those unbreakable ones, we're chucking yeah, them off think, buildings. We were yeah. <laughs> finding so. Put it under that wagon wheel. See what happens. <laughs> we tried our best to break them. Yeah, see, they were, they were made to last, weren't they? But now, not the 
but no happy days and lots of toys, yes. Absolutely. But, uh, hey, well, Linda, bless you. Thank you for coming thank on. Thank you. Man. No ha- problem. Happy Thanks memories. very much, Alan. Bye bye. She got it spot on as well. Viewmaster is what it was. Tony from High Spen has been trolling, apparently. So let's uh, let's see exactly uh, what he's up to. I've got this is interesting. I've moved into a thing called conference. I didn't expect that, but let's see what happens when I press the button. Hello, Tony. Oh, the hello in conference with. Uh, well, with you're in, you're in conference with him, obviously with the management. Hello, Tony. How are you doing? <laughs> Absolutely great, man. I'm so happy to hear you back on. Hurrah! Uh, no, I couldn't find you last week. I was hard, like you see, I was falling. <laughs> normally, normally, if you drive too slow during the street, you get arrested. No, but you know. But you got me at last, though. Hurrah! I did, mate. We did. Sp- a few work on you. Spread, uh, spread, uh, spread the word to the other taxis if you'd be so okay. That we. Oh, we were doing that in the station the other night. We're all yakking about it. So Good man, brilliant. We'll get, we'll get it back on. Thank I, you. Um, hey, I had some that toys that were great. You could break other toys with them. You might be unbreakable. What them? Because it was like everybody else had plastic toys. So if you were doing that that dunchy thing. You, the tongue is always going to win, that's for sure. You know what? The only with you want and stuff like that, yeah. Mm. My granny, when she was alive, she didn't know the frog bugger, but uh, she used to have this thing, you know, car boot sales are the in thing, no? Mm. Well, it wasn't car boot sales then, because nobody had a car, and I mean, a boot. But you had uh, <laughs> this jumble sales. Jumble sales, yeah, absolutely. It was drag with males, you know, from you big and hard to Whitney Bay for jumble sale, yep. and come back with jumpers that you'll grow into. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <for two> <laughs> and uh, oh, I've given you this album, you know, 1962 Bunty album for girls. Oh, thanks, man. I don't oh. think that, you know. Right. Oh, this would be the crap we had in our house. <laughs> and even, you know, once um, we'd left, you know, because I used to live with my granny, but once we left there, it would go back every year for Christmas and you'd dread getting a Christmas present. Yeah, yeah. It would be a bin liner. <laughs> my mother was exactly the same the yeah. stuff that I got was always second hand my oh. dad had either bought it as a job lot from some uh, uh, auction that he'd been to and he'd, I managed to get the whole thing for £3.50 and there's, yeah. there's plenty of toys there for the lad you know and you think oh there's a bag of rubbish that neighbour else wanted <laughs> <laughs> I thought that would be ideal your Christmas present <laughs> as, as we got older that would be uh, a box of Ricky C bags, a box of broken biscuits, you know, uh, and then I'll use I'll use the foot arch as a carrot carry. But uh, even the kids, my two kids, no, Lee, when we used to have you done, get a big bag. Of <laughs> <laughs> but this is the thing I used to remember. Whenever it was coming up to Christmas, I'd always open my mum and dad's present on the night before, just yeah. so that I I wasn't disappointed on the day. <laughs> <laughs> so if I was going to get peed off with, oh, what have they got me now? And even when I grew up, it would, you'd start getting uh, some aftershave you'd never heard of with the first half an inch missing because somebody else had had it before you, realised it stunk, put the lid back on it and stuck it in a car boot sale or a jumble sale. That would have been high karate. Well, there you go. <laughs> Boom. Is that oh, and everybody, everybody who used it wanted that huge, glamorous woman to burst in and oh, God, overpower uh, them. Then what the hell are you wearing? <laughs> I don't know, oh God, we think it's some rubbish. Like I mean, no, you know, you look at the stuff the kids have got now. I mean, my granddaughter has the right ways on the iPad, and you're on about extra sketch. Yeah. I mean, why the hell would you? She can like draw like Picasso on the bloody iPad of Van Gogh. You know? Yeah, absolutely. And it's amazing how far it's come on. Like, I'm mean, just the stuff we had, but we didn't have any better, so it was great. The thing is now that I'm, I'm kind of sad that the, the house telephone's eventually going to be disappearing for good. Uh, I think people can have them if they want them, but it's just, why would you have two? We, I don't, honestly can't remember the last time I picked mine up. No, yeah, right. I, I dusted on a regular basis. <laughs> <laughs> just sat there. And my wife went, do you think we should get a new phone? I went, why? We've never used that. Yeah, sat there it's, on the bench doing nothing, you know. It's an ornament. But uh, one about World Toys, uh, did, I don't know if you saw the James May thing the other day, because uh, I don't know if it's top 10 toys or something like that. All right. And he did Action Man. And when you right. explained how crap Action Man was, I was really disappointed. I used to love my Action Man, but you went, really, it didn't do anything, did it? No. No. It, no. It, the, only, the only time he ever saw proper action was when you could get hold of a Cindy doll at the same time. But <laughs> well, not really, because I had any bits. The guy <laughs> <laughs> that is hey, true, but I mean, but I still think she was the one that scratched his face. Uh, I, 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 
that's why you had to have them eagle eyes to see what you was up that's to. It. Oh, the, the ones that went side to side and just made him look kind of pervy, really. <laughs> More than anything else. Looked like he was looking over a hedge, you know, you know what I'm saying? I'm oh, very 15, I've got dripping on. <laughs> <laughs> Leave it alone and walk on, Tony, walk on. Hey, no, but it was just as, as soon as they started to get their own uh, boats, submarines. Uh, oh, yeah, they had the jeep. Oh, I know that. Then it went to another place where the people with the money, uh, you could compare them to us, who I, I basically had the the knife for his gripping hand and it, <laughs> the pistol for his gripping hand, and me mate had the boat and the scuba divers outfit and all of that and. Uh, uh, it made me very jealous indeed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tell you know, it's gone back to scuba diving. I've never done scuba diving, but there was an old toy when I was a kid, and it just jogged me memory. Yeah. And it was a, a scuba diver, and you put an aspirin in a little pouch in his back, <laughs> and you put it in the back, and he was supposed to swim up and do the back, but well, he didn't. Like, he just like, flapped the boot, like, he was having a fit. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, the other day, you know, it would fizz up, and it would sort of, his legs would kick back, and he was supposed to swim up and do the back. He never did, like, but right. I went to a box of aspirin, trying, but there you go. But I was rubbish. And I thought it was brilliant, hey, that's great, it's got to swim up the back. <laughs> I think it was one way of getting you in the back, like, you know, that's all it was for. No, 100%. 100%. Hey, um, great oh. stuff, Tony. But thank you for finding us again. That's the main hey, thing. Well, we'll be here every week and they can spend the word with the lads so they'll all be listening. Well, we'll keep pushing on as well. Hopefully, if we can that's scratch right. another day or two, we'll be there. Oh, God, I guess so, so otherwise you'll starve to death. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks again, Tony. All, right, mate. all of us. Bye bye. Now, uh, just before we play this next bit of music, now, a couple of things. For those of you that are long-term listeners to the stuff that I've done, you will remember we travelled all the way to St. Petersburg and Moscow to do a very special show telling the full story of Rasputin. So I thought, blame you're going to have to play that tune because it's really cool. Boney M, haven't heard it in the longest time. Uh, so I thought, well, hang on. I had a chat with Maisie Williams from Boney M, and she was telling us all about a particular fan. Uh, <laughs> I'm trying to think of, I've got quite a few of those, but I um, <laughs> had a few of those. But I, I, I think it's when uh, at one show we were doing where this guy took off his underwear and gave it to me. Oh, lovely. He actually took it off right there. <laughs> 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 I took it off right there and I put it in my other. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was, yes, okay. <laughs> that wasn't flowers, it wasn't jewellery, but it was um, a soiled underwear. <laughs> oh, dear, 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 dear. Yeah, I think yes. I think flowers maybe would be the preference, I think. It would be the preference. Something smelling just an ounce better than that. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I mean, I know guys get that all the time, um, 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 male um, entertainers. Um, they get, because Bobby used to get that with women used to take off their underpants and yeah. on, on, on the parts yeah. and throw them at him. Yeah. But when it actually happened to me as a female, I thought, okay, yeah, I mean, <laughs> what am I supposed to do with this? I'm, pr I'm presuming the guy looked like a male model, did he? No, he didn't. <laughs> <laughs> Night Owls with Alan Robson. What are we talking about next? You make the call. 0191 488 3188. Greatest Hits Radio. Alan Robson with you. And uh, keep spreading the word, you guys. A lot of people still... We've had half a dozen people on tonight going, Oh, you're back, thank heaven. And uh, spread the words. Greatest Hits Radio is where we will be every Sunday uh, until common sense ensues. So... Uh, so from Washington, you mentioned Ian Failings. The ITV ad slogan is like that, Ian Failings in each letter. Not sure I know what you mean, but I do. Sam from Starstream says, great to hear you. And the thing with Ian Failings apparently was called Magna Doodle. Magna, I wasn't going mad, nor was I on drugs. Magna Doodle is what it was. So thank you very much, Sam. It was that. And Jenny's story disagrees, though. She says, great to have you back. Thank you very much. The game with the metal filings was called Woolly Willy. I think that was, uh, well, certainly in our house, that was a, a very different, a very different game. I think my mother did knit one of those things for me, Dad. I'm not sure he ever wore it. And I got a picture of a vintage Viewmaster stereo viewer. It's on sale on eBay as we speak, 
£29 plus £3.85 postage. I'm not sure whether... I wouldn't... Would I? No. Not in this day and age, maybe. Uh, just leave it where it is. A glorious warm memory. Also, all the best to Greg and Nicky. Good to hear you back on the radio. We are currently camping at Scurry on the west coast of Scotland doing the NC500 Dodging the Rain. Listening to you on the app on our telephone. Great to have you with us, Greg and Nicky. Thank you very much. Let's go and talk to Sarah. She is in Durham City. Hello, Sarah. Hello, Alan. How are you? I'm very well, thank you, Kindly. What can we do for you tonight? Well, Alan, when I, I rang up and I said to Nick Glasses, I'm ringing up about um, absent friends and heartache. And oh. what I'm ringing up about is because we had an absent friend and heartache and it was you leaving the radio. Right. Ah, oh, bless. Honest to God, do you know what? And it was very difficult because I think I can speak for a lot of Geordies here. Not only did the predecessors of you know, do what they did. Mm. And I won't speak out of term, and if I do, cut us off. <laughs> I think you will. <laughs> <laughs> um, we lost Rafa Benitez that same week, and it was like the heartache. Honestly, yeah. it was like it was like a double breakup. Yeah, yeah. I, I imagine what it felt for me, babe, honestly. Uh, it was... Uh, it was... It was <laughs> at, like, I didn't... At, like, I, your first week on, I was sat, as I am now, in my kitchen, uh, one of my friends rang up, and I was like dead excited. I did miss last week because bank holiday just threw us completely. Yeah, absolutely. You know, but sure. it's absolutely smashing to have you back and whatever we can do to keep you get another couple of days because it's not, it's just night times aren't the same without you, Pez. Well, the, you, you see, the, the thing that I, I genuinely feel is that because of the, the talk show is. Yeah. is what it is. We, yeah. do, we do a show which passes on to tomorrow, which passes on to the next yeah, day, which passes I agree. on to the next. And it doesn't, as a one, it's all right, but it's not what it should be. It should be, should be five parts. I mean, I sat and I thought, like, honestly, like there was a lot of things um, on Facebook when I was chatting to different people about it. Mm. Um, now, I know what it's like if I don't speak to one of my friends for, like, mm say, two weeks, for an example. Yeah. Now, you have a lot with predecessors, if you like, who used to ring in regular. Yeah. And for, the, for that point of view, and I thought, how the like, hell are you going to be feeling not speaking to the... To uh, the especially because you have it. such... This, we have, like, a special community mm. on uh, Night Owls, and, and I just thought, well, what are they... Like, because he was used to routine and mm. everything, and, like... I've been, lo been, I've been lost. I've just been lost. If, if I bet. And yeah, I'm I'm trying to fill my time in doing really anything, but I I want to get back. I'm, I'm, I know. I'm already writing stuff that I think would be amazing, and and uh, so fingers crossed. Let's work towards that and get it to get there as quick as we can. And uh, what can we do to help? Well, just listen, listen in, in <laughs> listen in large numbers is the best is the, the best thing that we can. Absolutely, and I think like. We are like, like, you know, like you, I was listening. To, obviously, I've been listening since ten o'clock, and right. like you said, the taxi drivers earlier get the word around. Obviously, it's a different sure. kind of like station and what have you. Yeah. But you know, you, it should never have happened. Like in my mm. opinion, it should never have happened. But we, we will get there. I mean, we've got sure. to yeah. because it's so important. Like not mm. for everybody and for yourself. Mm. Um, and it was like I say that week. And I just thought, well, I can't listen to such and such. I can't listen to this. And now Rafa Benitez has left, and I haven't got my football. <laughs> and now this. <laughs> <laughs> now, now Alan's gone. What am I going to do? Yeah. You know, and I have like I've sported you for years. I've lived. I lived in New York. I've lived in Gibraltar. You know, you've been mm. a good friend to me. You've been a good support with mental health and everything. I've spoken sure. about it, and you've sure. been an absolute. You know, you've been as as good a help to us as what you know vice versa mm. but we just need to get you a couple of more nights because the sooner the better well, and, I, we, and, I, and I'm definitely not just speaking that on my own we know um, everyone wants that but we'll all help you and it's just lovely lovely to hear you back I mean the only regular I've heard back uh, for me sins was uh, Davy the Milkman and honestly right. hearing the two of you talking again it just it, it made us laugh so much it was like yeah. listening to me two old mates that's it. But they, it's a family thing, and it's one. It of, is. It's one of it those things that, that would be great if we had like some kind of 
major, huge family, and it's just building yeah. up. And because it's a safety network for people, yes, if we do, is. if we do it the right way, and exactly, uh, I would exactly. love, I would love to think that because the only thing that's different here is we've got the odd song, and we can, yeah. de- we we can deal with that because we, you know, we could you play good music. I, it's, 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 that's, as that. it's an absolute advantage, isn't it? But uh, yeah, absolutely. Thank, thank Alan, you so, so much, Sarah. We will battle honestly, on. It's lovely having you back. And thank you. Honestly, God bless and keep doing what you're doing, Alan, and we'll support you through and through. Yeah. Love you, night owls. Take care. Thanks, thanks to everybody for uh, that. Is the general feeling of of so many people talking about the text. Uh, that we started with at the beginning of the show about, like, old technology. Daniel Brabham, I still have VHS tapes. There you go. And Vin, Michael Vin Foster says, I'm listening to you on my Kenwood system <laughs> that is over 20 years old. It cost me two grand when I bought it. Hell's teeth. And it still sounds amazing. It has a six-tray CD player, tape deck, record deck, and I've added a smart box to it so I can listen to Spotify and DAB. The speakers are massive and it sounds awesome. I think a lot of people are very, very jealous. Uh, Shell Ellison, video recorder, got loads of videos in boxes, can't watch them, got nothing to watch them on. And <laughs> I think loads of... Last house that I left, you know, when you sell a house and you move on, attic full of VHS because I had loads of them. Nothing to watch them on. And Andrew Lowther, you can't buy them now. Even CDs are about done. Beer Delano, I used to get the bus to Newcastle regularly with my mum listening to my Walkman. There was a trick where you could save on battery power and rewind the tape by spinning it around a pencil. No, we all know that one. She would never let me do this on the bus, however, as sitting there looking down with both hands going frantically up and down looks like you're doing something else, frankly. David... Davy Crockett, uh, I always wanted a CB radio thing back in the day. Oh, we had a lot of truck drivers that had those kind of, hey, hello, good buddy, and everybody had a handle. Transonic said he used to have beta max. Blimey. A lot of stuff taking you well back. We've got Jade next, and uh, I'm not sure where Jade's from because... Uh, the little thing telling me where she's from is... Oh, there it is. North Shields. Hello, Jade. Alan. Hello, I'm darling. so happy that you're back. Thank you. I love you so much. Same well, as me. Thanks. Um, Alan, I've been going through mental health problems. Yeah, what's up? When I used to talk to you, mm-hmm. you just soothed my pain. Good. Like, seriously, Alan. Like... Yeah. I love you so much. Like I just been going through a bad time. What's ha- what's been happening? What's been happening, you know, Jane? Um, I don't know. I think I've just hit rock bottom, right. and then that's what's happened. Mm-hmm. But I'm so glad that you're back, and yes, I need you to talk to us when I'm feeling down, like no, you absolutely. always say. Happy to do it, love. Don't you worry about that. No, no problem. I'm back. That's good. It's all right. I had the crisis team out. Right. And everything. Did they help at all? The, um, yeah, a little bit. A little yeah. bit. All right. Right. And the psychiatrist and everything. Ah. And I think, you know, when I didn't speak to you for a long time. Yeah. And I used to ring every week. Yeah. It was absolutely. like my little getaway. And it was also a bit of a release as well because oh, yeah. I'm all right again and I've had a chat with Alan. Everything, everything's okay. Yeah, when I've had a chat with Alan. Yeah. But I just want to say thank you because you also give me my ticket to go and see the Bob Marley and the Wheelers. That's and, right, yeah, yeah. Yeah, in the UB40. Uh-huh. Uh, well, I want to say thank you for that. Well, you're welcome. If we can dig out some more tickets, we'll be watching for some good bands for you. But, hey, thank you very much for coming back on, Jade. It's great to hear I from you. I love you, Alan. Well, thank you. Love you too. You take care. Okay. God thank bless. you. Bye-bye. Oh, my goodness. Oh, I'm, I'm just back. Spread the word. Have the blade. 0191 4 double eight. Three one double eight. If I could help you in any which way, if you're brand new and you've not heard of Night Owls or any of that, we are a northern institution spreading across planet Earth, and uh, we would love you to join us. I'm going to give you four clues. This is for your mug prize, a mug that I must admit 
I hadn't seen up until today. Hang on a second. I did get one out to show the people who are ultimately going to be watching this on YouTube later. Oh, there it is. Um, it says, get to those phones. Sundays from 10 p.m. Digital mobile. Uh, it gives us all the, the digital hub knobs. Greatest hits radio. And there's a fine picture of the Night Owls logo with Cash for Kids underneath. You can get these for four Cash for Kids, and they're not selling them at a stupid price either. So a uh, proper mug like, decent mug like price. You are not being mugged. That's the difference. So if you want to pick one up, contact uh, the radio station. Cash for Kids, they'll look after you. And uh, you can get them online as well, apparently. I'm being uh, informed in my lurg. So there you go. 0191 488 I just thought uh, if we're going to be giving clues out, now is the time for the first one. And it is. What is the best hair colour on earth, in my opinion, or a tasty spice? Okay. Best hair colour on earth, in my opinion, or a tasty spice? Well, you've got to work out what my hair colour is, still. Uh, best hair colour on earth, in my opinion, or the name of a tasty spice. And while you're cogitating, we're going to be getting some more callers on air after George and Aretha. The voice of the North. Alan Robson's Night Owls. The phone-in that gets you talking. Greatest hits radio. There. Now we've got Stacey from Waka, who is on the end of the lane, and I think she's with us on is it lane seven, I'm guessing, and let's go there. Hello, Stacey. Hi, Alan, you all right? I'm good, darling, thank you. How are you? Um, I'm fine, fine. I'm, I'm glad that you're back. Thank you. Good to be here. Um, I never even realised it was just a day I saw it on Facebook. I didn't actually know that you were actually back. Well, this is going to keep your finger on the pulse. But, um, I was just... Also, did um, Nicola show you the picture I sent her? Yes, that's right, uh huh. That's my new little dog. He's called Rocco. Rock. <laughs> he looks cute, but he looks like a handful. You know, he's a nightmare. He <laughs> really is. You know, he's, he's so adorable. Like, with, with his eyes and everything, it's just a, it's so adorable. Like, I love him. He's quite, he's quite um, affectionate as well. Is he like, naughty, you know, though? Very. Yeah. Like, like yes, he knows where I'm not myself. He's very tamed, and <laughs> um, but he's quite no. He, he eats things he shouldn't eat. He gets his own way when he shouldn't. And um, right. he's quite yappy. He'll bark at anything. <laughs> like, he'll go crazy if someone knocks at the door. He'll go crazy. Right. Um, Sounds like well, you've got a little, a, a lovely little friend, though. And I know he's crackers, but that kind of fits in with the family, doesn't it, Stacey? Come on. Uh, he makes us laugh, even like nah, when I'm down. He'll like he'll be <laughs> stupid. And I say, Rocco, stop it, you know? Yeah. Um, and I had him for a walk the other day, and he was trying to have a fight with an Alsatian. Whoa! Only, do you know what I mean? He's only tiny. I think I, I think the Alsatian would be looking at that thinking, what the hell's going on here? The Alsatian didn't even bark. The <laughs> owner of the Alsatian said, you know, that my dog would eat it for its breakfast. <laughs> do you know what I mean? There's definitely no chance for my dog. No, I don't think so. You're just going to have to teach him. Teach him who to deal with and who not to deal with, and you leave... You leave German shepherds alone, I think. Uh, no, no, that's him. What he's bad is he's he's casting at the moment. Oh, because uh, he's short head. So right. And like when it, like when it goes from winter to summer or autumn, right. his fur he casts his fur. So he's, so yeah, everything that you eat now's got a bit of dog fur in it because it's flying around the room, is it? Definitely. Oh dear. <laughs> yeah. And he, he eats, you know, he, he's only a little dog, so he can only have so much food. Right. And honest to God, he eats, he eats quite a lot. <laughs> and, like, it's my birthday today. Hey, happy birthday, Stacey. So I had a party yesterday, but I kind of let my hair down. So, right. Like, I was, I was, obviously, I'm in the flat. Uh -huh. I invited my mum and a few friends over. Right. And honest to God, I don't, I, I've, I don't usually drink anyway. Right. So, like, normally at New Year, like, I'll just have one or two to celebrate the bells, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, But last night, honest to God, I couldn't be any more drunk. <laughs> oh, no. Like, I was, an, I was an idiot. I fell asleep in the bathroom on the floor. <laughs> right. <laughs> I wanted to go in the bath at two o'clock in the morning. Uh-huh. I, like, I just went to bed, but... Good. Um, I suffered today, like... Well, this is the price. Uh, maybe his drink doesn't suit you. Stay it doesn't. Be no, I had, I, I, had re I had a really, really good night. 
Uh-huh. But I see, like I've told my mum and I've spoke. I've said to Kevin, you know what? I'm never going to drink again. No, you were the because I don't usually drink anyway. No, and it just, really this is night. just this is just proof of the reason why you're probably better not. <laughs> yeah, that's the yeah. thing. Hey, well, great to have you back, Stacey. Thank you so much for coming on. Let me know that you're you're back out there again. That's fabulous. And I'm myself. I'm happy. Well, I'm happy at the moment. Good. Um, I'm getting older. I'm starting to feel me. Um, I'm starting to get bad legs and bad back because I'm thirty. <gasps> Bloody you poor old thing. I need a summer frame next. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's hope it takes a little bit longer than thirty to get you there. That's uh, that's going to be a ninety job. So hey. Uh, build yourself up, get strong. Going out with the dog every day is going to help you, though. Yeah, I take him out twice a day, once in the morning and once on the night. Lovely. Because he's only got little legs, so he'll have like, a little whinge. Yeah, but mind you, when his legs get a bit bigger, he'll take you further, you see. That's the good thing. But I... you know, he's a, good, he's a good dog. You know why? Because he's already trained, so like he'll sit, he'll give you a paw. Right. He gives you high fives. <laughs> right. So he's brilliant, honestly. So you and Rocco are set for life. Stacey, lovely catching up. Thanks for coming Bye-bye. on down. Take Bye-bye. care. Bye bye. So there you go. It's let's let's get a dog that'll eat me out of house and home. Uh that'll drive me mad, but because he's cute, we'll put up with it like like many a husband. Uh oh one nine one four double eight three one double eight Anne Cumpson. Evening, Alan. You are making this show your own brilliant links from the course of the music. So good to have you back. Some of the toys my kids loved were a plastic helicopter you wrapped an elastic band around and flew, a catapult, an evil Ken Evil, don't remember that, Barbie dolls, you could dress them up, and those comics with dolls in that you would cut out the clothes and put their dresses on, and also spud guns that you put the end of a potato, you stuck the end in a potato, it cut a little thing out, and then you fired that little bit of uh, of potato at somebody not expecting it. Ah, on the back of the leg, usually. I uh, cried my eyes out when you left, Alan. Couldn't believe it. We're all behind you, and we're so glad you're back. Thank you, Anne. And we ha- also have Andrew next, who I think is from Spennymoor. Let's head off in his direction. Hello, Andrew. Hello, Alan. Hello, sir. How are you? Oh, I'm moving because you're one of the best. Well, thank you. You're welcome. So what do you want to talk about tonight then, Andrew? Right. This, um... I'm um, watching my language. OK. There's rubbish over the Queen. The Queen? The Queen. Right, uh uh-huh. Where the Queen should be prosecuted. What for? Um, over this Brexit lark. Uh-huh. I think it's diabolical when you... Well, how do you say it? You've got um, fake-ass Muppets mm-hmm. in Parliament. Right. They were not running the country properly. Mm-hmm. And we, it's all money to them. Right. Now, are we? Why prosecute the Queen when she signed something to go for a no deal? Right. When are we three years after? The Muppets can't even explain what right. they're doing. Yeah. It's horrible. It That's is absolutely not the only thing I want to talk to you about. Okay, what else then, Andrew? Right, I know you. I wouldn't want to talk politics. That's that's me. If you want to talk politics, I'll do that all night. No worries. Oh, I know about. So what, what about the loveliest bloke I've known? I've known. I've known about you since nineteen eighty eighty three eighty four. Right. Okay. And yeah. I followed you. Ooh. But my point of matter <laughs> is, I might be related to a queen. You might be related. How's that work out, um, Andrew? We're related uh, up to the Queen Mother. Right. And basically, it's up, it goes as far as Barnet Castle, uh, whoever owns Barnet Castle. We're related up to them. Oh, right, OK. Well, that's that's the royal line, isn't it, right there? Well, that's the royal line, but at the end of the day, what do I say? Well, I mean, do you own Spennymoor, Andrew? I don't know. <laughs> I wish I did. You should be Lord Andrew of Spennymoor, then. I should have a lot of money. You sh- absolutely. No, what well, my point of the matter is, all this politics, like, it's all money. Yeah, it is, it's true. It is all money, mm. whatsoever. Yep. And what you're now saying is, you're going to go for another Article 50. Yeah, 
Uh-huh. What a total load of garbage. It just seems to be going... It's like a big circle. We're just I chasing each other's tails. Yeah. I'm paying bedroom tax. Uh-huh. Uh. And I find that really diabolical. It is, absolutely. And what this government's saying is, oh, it's the only way our um, Conservative Party is getting any money in. <laughs> what a total load of garbage. Right, right. Ah, oh, yeah, you're loud and clear, mate. Loud well, and clear. That was my only point. Um, no worries. Blaming the Queen. Why right. blame the Queen? What's got Jack to do with it? Well, I tell you, I'm not surprised the family's closing ranks. <laughs> Sir Andrew from Spenny. Hey, good talking to you, mate. Thank hey, you very oh, much. Yes, oh. ma'am. There's some in West Cornford as well. <laughs> there is. Um, the Boers lines are in West Cornford. That's true. A very, very, very uh, famous we'll family. Well, I'm, I'm going to keep so, in with I'll you. I'll tell you what, you have a lovely night. I will indeed. And I respect you that much and thank you very much for what you put on earlier on about the Americans. Right. Um, or the, the hurricane. Sure. It's now 178 or something. Oh, my goodness. Or the properties. Terrifying, isn't it? Terrifying. Thank you. I've got some mates on the internet at the minute. Right. And we're terrified. They've got the windows boarded up. Mm. We don't do nothing. Yeah. We don't sit down and have a meal. Yeah, scary, because isn't it? Because it could be the last meal. Isn't that horrific? Andrew, thank you again. Bless your heart. Thanks for coming on. There is Sir Andrew. Of spending were in various lumps of East Council. 0191 4 388. And he's quite right, he's getting nasty across the Bahamas, and uh, people in Florida are very, very worried indeed. We're going to be talking to Bodie from Middletown, Ohio, United States of America. But just before that, we have a, a little bit of Roxy music. Now, for those people that, that know the band, you will also be aware that the lead singer, Brian Ferry, is from Durham, from uh, the northeast, farming family. I asked him all about how did he got his break in the first place, and this is what the gentleman replied. After I left university, I went to live in London. I felt, you know, I have to try and make my way in the big, <laughs> wide world, and uh, so I finally left the northeast, and um, I started putting together a band. I started writing songs. Uh, which became the first Roxy Music album in the end. Mm. And uh, first of all, I met, who was, uh, well, I was working with Graham Simpson, who played with me at university in a band called The Gas Wars. And uh, <laughs> so Graham was a terrific bass player. Right. And then uh, we met somebody called Andy Mackay, who became the sax player in the band. And he had a synthesizer. And uh, and we found this guy, Brian Eno, who could play the synthesizer for us. <laughs> and. Uh, uh, it also uh, Paul Thompson, of course, came from Jarrow. Yeah, we auditioned him one night, and he came fresh from the from the building site, really filthy. And he said, "I oh, yeah. am," <laughs> and he was fantastic play. You know, he's sort of, a um, fantastic guy, and uh, still is. I remember a medley I put together for you back in the day, and from that song, it went. There's a new sensation. And we were doing The Strand briefly. Oh, blimey, didn't they do some great tunes? If you just look across the board, even in just the early uh, Roxy music, Virginia Plain, Pajama Rama, and all I want is you, that very voice. Fabulous. Anyway, let's crack on. Now, the thing we're searching for for our competition is one of the world's most common surnames. That's what we're looking for tonight. One of the world's most common surnames. Now, the first clue is the best hair colour on earth, in my opinion. Uh, if you don't know the colour of my hair. Or a tasty spice. There you go. Tasty spice, often used in Chinese food. Uh, so there is the first clue or clues. You'll get three more clues, put them all together, and tell me what word you can stick on the end, which is one of the world's most common surnames. Hmm, that's where we're heading, if you're bright enough. Let's see. Anyway, let's press on, because in Cincinnati, Ohio, in a place called Middletown, we have Bodie. Hello, Bodie. Hey, I'm back. You are back on a new station as well. Welcome to you, Bodie. Good to hear you, man. Thanks, man. I'm happy to be here. So how are things? How's the family? How's everything? Well, my sister had a brief spell. Um, she spent some time in the hospital. And 
she's out now and good. she's home and uh, I'm taking care of her. No, that's pretty and good. She's still with her. That's that's uh, an absolute plus. Uh, obviously, the big story in the states at the moment is this hurricane that's heading towards Florida, yeah. where where everybody and I know you're a big fan of of all the sci-fi. You will know that in one of the Disney properties, they've just built Star Wars land. The the entire yeah. Tatooine of various lumps of various parts of the galaxy, and they've spent billions yeah. doing it. And now you've got a, yeah. a hurricane heading in that direction. Yeah, it's probably going to crash it to splinters, but uh, I hope nobody's killed. No, terrifying. You know, that's, that's, that's the main thing. And you know what's funny? I'll tell you something that's a bit of a coincidence. When I was five years old, Hurricane Dora hit our home in Jacksonville, Florida. Right. And, and we lived in a house on stilts on the beach. Oh, my and, goodness. And uh, I dimly remember my mother grabbing me and saying, get your puppet. I had a Cecil the C6 Sea Serpent puppet. Right. I grabbed that. It was my favorite possession on earth. <laughs> she stuffed me and my two brothers in the back of the old Pontiac. My dad staggered out of the house. My mother came out with a suitcase. She had a completely stiff upper lip the entire time. She was an unflappable person. Wow. A Geordie. She was a Geordie, so she was unflappable. <laughs> so uh, she came out of the house, and, uh, you know, she got in the car and said, we're off to a new adventure. Right. And that's when we came to Ohio. So presumably you, ju you, just, what, you just left everything behind you and drove to another place. Yeah, we had very little warning. We could have been killed if we'd stayed. As a matter of fact, I watched a newsreel on uh, YouTube about Hurricane Dora, and I was treated to the site of our house turned over on its side on the beach. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. But, I mean, really it, it, forgive my ignorance here, but with the, um, the house tipped over on the beach, d does the government not have to provide you with some money to rebuild or...? Or is that just well, a, it just there, just tough? My uncle had a job. My dad's brother, half brother, had a job in Ohio. Yeah. And he got my dad a job driving a truck for a company called Mayflower Moving and Storage. Right. And um, so we went to Ohio and we moved into this little upstairs apartment mm. on Garfield Street. Right. And uh, my dad went off to work for uh, the moving company, mm. and he made what, in our eyes, was a fortune mm. doing that. Right. And we were we loved it. The only thing I missed was the beach. Sure, but but uh, we 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 did well. It's it's one of those things though. We're we're hearing that that obviously uh, Barbados and the Bahamas have been where you know it's it's hit big style and it's. It's not looking yeah. good. Is it just coastal areas that that Florida have to worry about? Because it's one of the places where I, I mean, I'm not I'm not saying there's a difference between a human life from a Brit who's over there than than a Floridian, but uh, we we do have an awful lot of people over there who go there to yeah. escape everything else. And it seems like this this thing's this. Do you know what I mean? That's why people go because yeah. it's they want to go leave the real world. We're going to go to this fantasy world, and blame me. This it's is ironic. a this is a because I remember and I've mentioned this some years ago. I remember once in a very early visit to to Orlando, the the international drive area. I stayed at a circular, fourteen fifteen story hotel, and I was on the top floor. And the building started moving from side to side by about ten to fifteen feet, and I rang, yeah. I rang down, and I said, "the the wind up here is is horrific, and it feels like the building's going to fall over. We're really moving." And they they said, "Well, if you feel really bad, just come down to the to the ground floor." But the building has been designed to cope with winds much greater than this. And I looked out the window, yeah. and all of the all of the chairs and the sunbeds were all in the pool. There's nobody yeah. about, and the you know raging gales, and I thought, blame me, you you come away for sunshine and you know to escape again to escape bad weather, and look at what's happening here. Same thing, it's, well, it's storm season, I suppose, is it? Yeah, yeah. This is actually this is the hurricane 
time of the year. And uh, this was the same time of year that our house was hit. Right, when I was right. Little, little kid. But, uh, you know, the thing, the ironic thing is all these people think, oh, Miami, Florida is the paradise. Mm. And you get down there, and it, it is if the weather's good. But if you're right on the beach and there's a hurricane, you know, and you ask me, uh, you know, what what about the people inland? Mm. Well, the, the danger lessens the further inland, of course. Right. But you still have things like month-long power outages, mm. uh, rain flooding, uh, roofs being torn off houses. Mm. You know, it's like, a, it's like a tornado in that way, even, even way inland. Um, about 10 years ago here... In Ohio, we, we got a storm that was a remnant from a, a hurricane hmm. that knocked all of our power out for eight days. Aye, aye, aye. Right, right. Yeah. So presumably they'd have to come around with water and come around with with all of the things that you need, food, and uh, go, how did, you yeah. heat, how did you heat yourself then? Well, it was... Uh, it was this time of year, so... So it's not too bad. You know, it's already warm, but... Gotcha. Uh, we had to have the uh, the uh, the Army, you know, the uh, mm. the Army Guard, the National, National Guard, Guard yeah. came out with trucks and brought us MREs, you know, those little meals ready to eat, mm. and uh, brought us first aid stuff and right. candles mm. and, uh, and water, you know, so we could wash up and all that stuff. And they knew that my wheelchairs ran on electricity. Right. So they came out with generators and you know, gave us generators to, uh, to charge your stuff. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> As long as they look after yeah. you, that's the main thing. Hey, well, buddy, we'll be yeah. keeping in. We'll be keeping in touch. Obviously, keep your eye on everything that's happening there. You'll be a, a, a regular know. part of what we do, as always. And thank you so much for being there for us. And uh, keep your, Bless your keep, heart. keep your ear to the wall. Love to have you back. Thank you, buddy. Thank you, man. Love everybody. You too. Take care. Bye bye. Great to have Bodie back with us on the show. Lots to talk about, lots to do. But just before that, as you know, I'm going to be hosting the Great North Run next week. I'll be there early doors. You'll hear my voice probably before anybody else's when you're down there. And I will be in the centre of the dual carriageway when you guys are running past me. So make sure you say hi uh, if you will be so kind. So uh, that is happening next Sunday. And Jan from Newcastle and uh, is with us, I think, now on Line 8. Hello, Jan. Hello. Hello there. So what can we do for you tonight? I've just listened to the, the, the boy there. Yes. He's got a lovely accent, hasn't he? Yes, absolutely. Right. From Americana. There's a couple of things, right? OK. One, did you meet the big pink dress guy? I, uh, last year I did, yes. And I, uh-huh. I, I, say, I see him every year and I usually say hi to him, so uh-huh. I'll be seeing right. him again this year, I'm sure. I handed, a week, couple of weeks back, I handed a, a big pump of hammer. That's right, yes, you, right. you told us. Uh-huh. That, because I was going through something bad. Right. To turn it into something good, mm-hmm. to distract, like you've got to do. Yeah, sure. And uh, I inboxed him yesterday to see how it went. Uh-huh. And do you know how much he weighs? £190. Fantastic. I mean, when you add up what he does right the way across the time before he even gets anywhere near the Great North Run, he mm. does so much. Thanks to people like yourself, of course. So well done. So right. what, what was the other thing then, Jan? Right, do you know how you're going on with toys? Yeah. Right. Do you know what we were fascinated with when we were kids? Exactly. Can you remember the rocket with the, the, the cat? Oh, that you could go up to the top of a building and I'd lob it out of an upstairs window or something. And... Oh, I you just <laughs> banging off this part of the pavement. <laughs> uh, yes, I remember I them. Was, we were fascinated with them. Uh huh. And you know the big long balloons that they got like snakes on them. And All right. Yes. Grow. Yes. Uh huh. And you put that, you blow them up, right? Well, it took me ages to blow them up. Yeah, right? you should get, get you'd get dizzy before you got the balloon. Oh, up. I. Right, but when my leg gone, you should have seen what it is. And then they've removed me back once and stuff with it all. Oh, Absolutely. And we're fascinated with that. But you know what we're going, all going to miss? What's that? You on New Year's Eve party. Yeah, there you go. That's, yeah. I mean, a lot because of people said that they already missed the fact that there wasn't a quiz on, on bank holiday. And they obviously, 
Uh, in time, hopefully, we'll we'll get all these things back. But uh, for the time being, well, I'm getting me me knees under a brand new table. We'll uh, take things easy. But uh, how about the New Year's Eve parties? How many years have you done them? Well, about thirty. Yeah, I think about thirty-eight in total. Uh-huh. It's so, going to be a big, massive miss. Yeah, absolutely. Because you put all the tunes on, you were telling us whose families was doing what. Yeah, absolutely. And we were taking notice what you were saying. Yeah. But we were enjoying my own party. Well, that was it. Well, that's for a house. But more You're people have... everybody together, really. More people have house parties than uh, uh-huh. than go out these days. But, hey, you never know what might happen. There's still time. Who knows? Right. Another thing. Yes, Jack. Before I go. Uh-huh. I got invited to Metro Radio. Right. Station. So uh-huh. I went there on Friday. Uh huh. Didn't know what to expect. Right. So I went to see Dan Morning because he was leaving on Friday. He Bless was. Him. Bless him. He's a yeah. good lad, him. He is. And uh, he took us into the booth thing. Uh huh. He put the headphones on. Mm-hmm. And he had the music. So I put them on. I could hear music. And he was saying, Can you hear me? But I couldn't hear him. <laughs> Right? Right. He was miming like a Peter K, what he would do as a K. Ah, oh, right. Like uh-huh. miming. Yeah. So anyways, he says, right, do you know what you're doing? I went, oh, yeah, I do. I'll, he says, do you know, he gave us a couple of questions, but not on the paper. Mm-hmm. And I just gave him answers. Great. Right? Good. What happened? He <laughs> put the headphones on, went to the speaker. I could hear the music. I could hear Dan. <laughs> Do you know what I done? I jumped because I heard my own, my own voice. <laughs> I said, "What? What is going on?" Yeah. I felt like a robot. I will tell you, it's a shock when you first hear what you really, uh, what you really right? sound like. So this was, this is what happened. I, I got where well, I was thinking. I'm hearing my voice. I'm mm. hearing Dan. I'm yeah. hearing the music. Yeah. And I'm trying to answer questions. So my brain's like a washing machine, right? <laughs> Thinking, what? <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> so I practised with the girl that was in the booth. Right. He stopped it because I knocked it up for him. Right. I felt, I felt guilty as out. Oh, he did. But I thought, right, I'm not going to let Dan down because you're leaving. That's right. So I was told that the girl got used to the headphones and guess what? Clocked it because I ignored my voice. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, as long as you had I a good did, time. I did do it though. I was, it was, I seen Chris Felton last. Right, did I you? I've never right. seen him. Lovely. I've never seen him before. He's kind of lad. He's all right. But now you're going to be a big miss, and I wonder who's going to do an, uh, a New Year's Eve party. Well, year. hey, you don't say it's not me yet, because you never know. You absolutely never know. But well, th- do you know what you can do? What's that? You know, if you're going to do a New Year's Eve party, mm-hmm. where you are now, uh-huh. put it on Facebook and we'll all have a big party. Right, well, it makes sense. But, Jan, thank you very much for coming on. Jan, Nate in Newcastle. Message just come in. Alan, OMG, thank you so much for playing Roxy Music in that clip of Brian Ferry. I've been following him for about 30 years, met him a number of times. Such a gent who cares about his fans. Went to Germany this year and he blew us away with his love shows there. Fantastic. Now, yeah, Brian's a good lad. We look after each other, the brothers of the North. However... Uh, occasionally a, a band of Southern Jessies come and, and impress. And this is, in my opinion, one of the best things they've ever done. Alan Robson's Night Owls. The phone-in that gets you talking. Greatest Hits Radio. And we want you to pick up your telephone bags room to get you on the show tonight. We've got a few people in the queue now. We are working our way through it, but there's bags room to get you on air tonight if you would like to. And don't forget everybody that gets on the show each evening goes in the hand for a T-shirt and one that winner will be revealed at the end of the show when we also show you who's won our other competition for a Night Elves mug. A great collectible, an all-time collectible there as well. The first clue is the best hair colour on earth, in my opinion, or a tasty spice. Uh, it was also the nickname of one of the spice girls, tasty spice. Second clue, someone who has strong rules and makes you stick to them. How would you describe somebody like that? How would you describe someone who has strong rules and makes you stick to them? Two clues down, two more clues to come. And remember, the thing we're looking for, one of the world's most common 
surnames. Now, we're talking about all the technology, and we have been across tonight, and that's led to some of the technology of toys that we've played with. Whether it's old tech or old toys, if you want to get into that, pick up your telephone and give me a ring about all the the things that you have had, maybe some of the things you still own. How many of you have still got a Scalex trick uh, or something like that? Or maybe one of those Subutio games, but you've got the light-up floodlights. Nah, that nah, was seriously posh. Um, a bit of news coming in, things that we would love you to, to ring in about. We mentioned the story of the householder horrified because his roofer pooed on his roof and left it up there, not expecting the, the householder to go and actually ch- check out his work. Um, and Roker and beaches along the uh, Sunderland and Teesside area covered with stinging jellyfish, apparently. And uh, is, is that... Is that what the ones you've got to whittle on? I'm, I can't remember the uh, the rule, but we think it is the one. Uh, but to me, weighing on something and somebody would be fairly embarrassing at the best of times. But is that uh, the way to deal with it? Also, la- last week we talked briefly about Wayne Rooney, and one of the things that I don't think anybody could understand was why his wife has put up with the kind of behaviour. Uh, Wayne disappears to America thinking, well, in America, nobody will be able to catch me when I'm up to no good. Maybe. Well, in the newspapers today, Wayne Rooney was in a hot tub with three women during a seven-hour party in Vancouver before taking one of the women back to his hotel. And even in America, they are saying, how can any wife stay with a cheat? Have you? It's not something that I could ever do. Uh, I caught one of my wives... I've had a few of you didn't react. I caught one of my wives cheating and that was it, done. In that split second, that was the end of it. I couldn't certainly cope with it. How does how do women put up with it? Or is it just money, do you think? If you're rich enough, you can put up with, with anything. What do you think? Also, a Stockton woman claimed £62,000 benefit while working at Tesco's and Marks and Spencer's. She's going to prison for that. And also a thing called vaginal steaming. Don't know whether you've ever come across it. I've never heard about it before. But apparently a woman has been badly burned uh, getting a vaginal steaming. Now, I would like to know if anybody uh, would care to help me out with this. What exactly is it? What's it for? How does it benefit you? Because apparently it's supposed to... It's something to do with prolapses. It was the best. Uh, the, the certain words you don't want to type into a works computer. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, 01914. So, I'm asking you to type it into your computer. 01914 And if we were, if that wasn't enough, let's get there. We mentioned briefly uh, the Brexit word. Labour, the Lib Dems, and some Tories have all said they would back a, a unity prime minister to uh, stop Boris and to stop a no-deal Brexit, and maybe stop Brexit altogether with a brand-new vote. They keep coming back to the same thing, and eventually, a fair chance it'll get there. And also, insults. Now, I don't know how many of you have ever been into Starbucks. Starbucks uh, coffee shop. Now, you go up to the counter... And you tell them what you want in a kind of have a caramelly macchiato or whatever. Uh, not that you've got any clue what it really is, but can I have one of them? And they'll say, oh, what's your name? And they write your name on a cup. And then when it's ready, because you're waiting at the end of the counter, they'll, they'll shout, if it was me, Alan, hopefully, Alan. And you say, that's me. And you'd pick your cup of coffee up and off you go. Well, there's a story in the press today that we shouldn't laugh at because it's not funny, and I don't want you to laugh at it either, okay? There's a woman who was absolutely disgusted when a barista wrote hippo on the other side. On the, I'm sorry. She doesn't look like a hippo, not remotely. She had lipstick on. And it says, woman at Starbucks disgusted when the barista wrote hippo on the side of her cup. And I've just wondered if that kind of thing must happen on a daily basis in Starbucks, that somebody will, you know, say, uh, the, the little bloke, the tiny woman, the large man, 
uh, and it's it, it's so difficult not to be to be fattest, but and obviously too hard for that barista who wrote that on the, on the side of the cup. Tell me any stories we've got. Pick up your telephone. Bags of room on night ales tonight, and we got some black coming up too. In the meantime, we have Linda who is in Germany. Hello, Linda. Oh, good evening, Alan. Good night. Good night. Hello to you. Are you having a good time over there? Oh. Alan, I have had a ball. Right, well, what have you been up to then? I've been up to, I'll tell you what I've been up to. I went to the hairdressers. Right. Just down the road from me. Uh huh. Um, at my daughter's house in, in a place called Valen, Bank Astral Coors. Right. And um, they're called Krugers, and the, and the girl, Anya, she did my hair for me. Right, and lovely. She put, she put like a, a grey um, extension in my hair with. With seven diamantes on it. What? Seven diamantes. It's like an upside down vajazzle, isn't it? <laughs> it's lovely. So you've got you've got like diamond cop now. Is that what they call you <laughs> over there? <laughs> yeah. That's brilliant. <laughs> wow. And then, and then um, oh, what, what was it? We had a party for my brother Tim because yeah. Tim came over from Wales. Right. And now, and, we, and it was so hot, Alan. It was about thirty-four degrees. Right. We had um, fruit and more fruit and nuts <laughs> and crisps and and beer and wine and. But I didn't. I didn't drink any because it's not good for me. Right. What was it? Um, I just drank water. <laughs> the thing that I've noticed in Germany, mind, an awful lot of people seem to make their own booze. Yeah, but I did as well. Because I remember my, my family over there used to make peach schnapps mm. and any fruit they could get their hands on, they could turn to alcohol in no time at all. Right. Good heavens. So was your family, did your family do the same kind of stuff? Well, I'll tell you what I've done in the moment. Mm. What was it? You know, um, yesterday mm. I, went, I went out red, white and blue mm -hmm. and yellow and I went as Brexit exit. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and everybody was loving it. <laughs> but then we had um, we were waiting for the fireworks to be um, to be uh, to be um, set off. To set off, yeah. And um, and then it was a downpour. You should have ah. seen it. What was it? The the the, the lightning and the. And the thunder, oh, it was incredible. It was more ex more exciting than, than the fireworks. Than the fireworks. I mean, did the, the fire fireworks were brilliant. I presume the fireworks had to be cancelled, did they? Or? No, no, they put them on as soon as the as soon as the as soon as the, the storm had gone The worst got out of the way, right? Wow, that's great. Yeah, and then I, I danced to I danced to Sex on Fire. Sex by on Fire. A group, a group called uh, Cara Caracas. Right. They were brilliant. So they were absolutely brilliant. It was brilliant to be entertained, I tell you. Because I, I always thought in Germany it was the Konigs of Leon that did that song. All right. Okay. Well, hey, hey, I'm sure a few of them probably well, did. Well, this, this group called Carolus, they right. played Sex on Fire and they played the other one from um, El Kings of Leon. Um, oh, it was, they were absolutely fantastic That's groups. Good. They were. Um, yeah, so the whole the whole village was so up on I their was, feet. I was spinning round like the Richard. Right. <laughs> oh, I was really going for it. I, so I don't care about pain. I'll just do it. <laughs> yeah, and worry about it in the morning. I bet. Yeah, exactly. Did you <laughs> did you pay the price? Or, what was it? Did you pay the price in the I'm morning? I'm paying the price now, Alan. Well, today is it right? Oh, what was it? What it, what had happened was um, I went today. I went with the floats. Uh -huh. Going through the the town, right? And um, I was um, Linda, um, what was it um, Grandma Linda, right? Princess. Oh, there you go. What was it with a, with a with pearls and diamonds, and um, and your cup red, red, white, and green, and your coffee diamonds. And I had like like um, um, crosses on the front of me, like sexy top sort of thing, you know? Oh, right, OK. And um, and I was going, prose it, good health. Right. Prose it. 
Uh-huh. Good health, all the way down the street. And I was blowing kisses to some to, to nice men, you know. <laughs> 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 I was on the ball. I had the time of my life. And then towards the end, the last... I'd walked about three miles or something. Yeah. And then towards the end, I had the stick with me, but... I couldn't walk anymore. Right. And, and I, I said, I'm, I've got to give up. Right. And I sat on this stone, on this rock. Mm. And I put my basket down because I had lots of goodies in my basket. I had rose petals and mm. bread and um, Stuff. grapes. Stuff, sweets. Right. And I had, I had water with grapes because I couldn't drink because I'm on medication. Ah, right, yes. Uh-huh. And, um, and, then, and then I was on this rock and I started to cry. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> oh no! I had to get the Red Cross out because my legs blew up like a balloon. Oh no! And, and maybe I have to go to the hospital tomorrow. Right. So what? What is that with? Just you, you've overdone it a bit. I've is... overdone it. Right. Well, all that'll mean is you've just got to probably keep your legs up for a bit over a day or two and get. Well, I am um, friend the doctor out here in Germany. Yeah. And husband come to pick me up and uh, from the Red Cross. Yeah. And um he give um his wife give me um three tablets of magnesium. Right. And it's gone down a bit, but I'm I don't want to go to hospital. Well, you just say that. Is there any way that I can get away? Because, I mean, all they're going to do in hospital, I've I think, is... I've got to keep my legs up. Well, I, I mean, that's the kind of woman I've loved all my life. But the... <laughs> but what they're going to what they're gonna do is probably give you a tablet or two and ask you to go home and keep your legs up. I think that's that... right. They're going to keep my legs up anyway. I think that's what they're going to do. So, hey, don't, yeah. don't worry too much about that. No, and it's just what... I was a bit frightened, that's all. No, I... well, of course. I mean, hey... Uh, if a part of my body blew up three times... <laughs> hmm. Alan... I'm, I'm thinking that. I'm, I've been on the verge of death for a, for a few times now since these last couple of months. <laughs> Exploding legs, we didn't expect, though. <laughs> didn't expect that from you, though. Oh, dear. Hey, you'll be fine. You'll be fine, and too. my feet. Oh, my poor feet. <laughs> you got feet like Fred Flintstone, have you? Just... Yeah. Oh, what a shame. <laughs> And I was making the joke of it. I says, "Oh, I says, there's a song in 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 um, in Cologne called that the water from Cologne is like disinfectant sort of thing." Mm. And I says, "But well, you can start um, take, having it on top at my legs now." I says, "Absolutely." <laughs> hey, but get your legs in the air for a lovely day and a half. Have a nice relax. And the, what was it? I won that heart as well. Right, lovely. I want a heart from um, what they call um, Holiday Bancaster Coors. Right. And it's a heart with with grapes on it. Lovely. And then I, 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 I wore a, a heart, mm-hmm. you know, because I said that I won the heart of, of um, yeah. Jesus Christ. Uh-huh, yes. But I, I had a heart with, with um, feathers of an archangel. Right. On, on my, on my uh, blouse. Very nice. What, you, what you didn't it. expect, though, was having the legs of John the Baptist. That's what you didn't expect. <laughs> That's what you didn't expect. <laughs> but, do you know, everybody's been so great and, and, and I've like, seen my friends and ah, I didn't know which group to, to go into, either Mulheim mm. or, or Valen. Right. But the Mulheim people are so fantastic. And they were all oh, Linda. And I... What was it? Remember when we were younger and all that? Ah, so great it was, so, it was so much fun. Oh. That's great memories. Hey, well, Linda, get get your legs up for tomorrow. Because the, the more you get them up, the, the less you'll probably have to worry about in the morning. You yeah. get get well, get strong, and I look forward to catching up with you next week. Oh, well, you take good care. Well, what about you, Alan? Are you all I'm right? fine, absolutely. No worries. Strong legs. No worries, all right. Like, I'll say a prayer for you as well. Well, that's a lovely, precious thing. Thank you, Linda. Take care, Alan. Get well, sweetheart. Bye-bye. Oh, blame me, when your legs blow up. I know occasionally it's happened to people on aeroplanes, you know, they get pressure. 
kind of thing. And also, this has come in from Gary and Margaret. Hi, Alan, just want to say, so great to have you back at last. The legend has returned. We're listening from Western France, a little village called Lorraine. We're currently building our forever home and living in a caravan while we do. Five months in the, into the build now, the caravan's getting smaller. I bet it is. All the very best, Alan. Love from Gary and Margaret. Thank you for giving us some normality back on a Sunday night. Happy to be here. And uh, more to come on the big one. Greatest Hits Radio. Don't forget, if you are listening to The Breakfast Show, Rossi has been giving you the chance to be a winner. And you can find out with Andy Crane in the afternoon uh, if you are going to be victorious. So get ready for that. Quick piece of music, and then I think we're going to be blaring. There you go, KC in the Sunshine Band. Whenever you play that, because it's an absolute classic, you always think, oh, but hang on. Sound your funky horn, Queen of Clubs, get down tonight. Uh, they've had a stack full, haven't they, when you think about it? Anyway, let's crack on. We have uh, two clues down, two more clues to come. For our competition, everybody that rings in goes into the hat, of course, for the T-shirt. We were going to blah, however, we've got Christine on the line, so I shall blah immediately after this fine lady. Hello, Christine in Wall's End. Uh, hello, Alan. Hello, my love. What you got for us tonight? Um, I don't feel a bit well, my throat's a bit sore, so please excuse That's me. That's all right. <laughs> um, the um, technology that used to have mm. I've got a, I'm sad. CPC 464 computer in the cupboard somewhere. Give over. My goodness, that was pretty much where it all began, wasn't it, with Amstrad's? Yeah. Cheaper. So what's made you keep it? Most people would have had that uh, either online or in a, in a car booty by now. I don't know. I, I, um, I've got a cupboard full of anything I don't know. I'm, <laughs> I'm trying to open the door because everything falls out. So right. I'm just... <laughs> In the back of the cupboard somewhere. Yeah, I think I think most of us have got a cupboard like that where you you, do, you don't want to go in because once you start something, you're gonna to have to you know you'd have to finish it. It's either it's either a cupboard or a garage, uh, d- depending. But you got a lot of stuff like that, have you? Tucked away. Um, yeah, quite a lot of things. Yes. Right. So, what's your passion? I mean, are you a, a big music person, or did the Amstrad lead on to like modern computer games? Not, not really. I'm. Mm. Oh, you and I had me um, first son. I didn't sort of bother anymore with right. computers and. Right. Um, no, because with a, with a lot of people, Amstrad would have let on. They're probably on, on the the latest PlayStation playing one of the Call of Duties. You know, because games have moved. To, uh, a friend of mine had a, a, a little collection of Atari games. I seem to remember. And they used to think this was nothing will beat these games. They're the most amazing, most incredible, most fabulous. And then, like, six months later, oh, they're old stuff there. The stuff I'm on now, because technology's moving there at a real speed, isn't it? No, well, um, my youngest son is just going, what, what an Xbox One? So, mm. it obviously, you now the, the graphics and the, the games have obviously. The, it's just amazing now that the graphics on them what it used to be. Yeah, how, how come you've not been tempted though by seeing how good it is in comparison, and how come you haven't been sucked in? I don't know, I still like the old retro games. I don't know. <laughs> you know, I still sort of like the old. I kind of get it into this modern. No, uh, there, there does seem to be like a, de- a big detachment between people of a certain age. And I mean, I know people in their twenties who won't touch you know the modern games, but they love playing like the old school stuff. You know, they'll, they'll, there's a, a couple of pubs now that have started putting uh, old games in the lounge yeah. where everybody sits, and you'll see them playing. Is it Jenga, the one where you you pile loads of things on top of each other and you've got to remove them bit by bit? So yeah. you'll see them playing that, and there's a, another couple of uh, like. Older fellas playing Bookaroo, you know, having a paint and playing Bookaroo. I mean, <laughs> does life get any better than that? There you go. <laughs> Fabulous. Anything else then, Christine? Um, no, that's all. Just nice to have you back again. Well, bless you. Thank you very much for coming on. Hey, thank you. We'll catch up with you real soon. So there is Christine from uh, Wall's End and Amstrad CPC 464, I think she said, that she had in uh, in her house. 
fabulous. Now we mentioned that we were going to uh, we were going to blah, and indeed we will blah if I can find the blah because it's in here somewhere. But uh, oh, there it is, right at the very bottom where I least expected. So you press the button, and the blah will ensue. Exactly the blur is. We get the whole team together. We got Nicola from our switchboard who's with us now. Hello. And there she is. And we also have the legend and from the world of production, uh, Hollywood McShane. Hello. Hello. There he is. So we are taking a look first of all at the national newspaper front pages. What you're going to be finding on uh, your front page tomorrow. Now uh, I must say that uh, the Sunday newspapers have been a complete. Uh, mixture of stuff where people talking about trying to bring down uh, Boris and what have you. Monday's national newspaper front pages, they've kind of followed suit and they've taken it to a slightly different place. So let's have them and let's see what's happening. The Times, I'll kick you out of the party, Johnson tells Tory rebels. The big argument is uh, Boris Johnson trying to change the British Constitution by making it up as he goes along and a lot of other people in his own party saying, you can't do that, uh, you just simply can't do it. But he's saying, stuff that, I'm going to do it my way. And also, pharmacies are going to offer free, on-the-spot heart checks. Don't know whether you would walk into a pharmacy and say, check my heart, but it sounds like, uh, it sounds like a, a, a big deal. I would be a bit worried if you if you walked in and said, get to a hospital. So, because... Good that they don't take pressure off the doctors, though, for people going in for daft things. That makes sense, but to me, and I, I always quote what my dad said, keep away from doctors and hospitals because they'll, if, if they look, they'll find something. And they, they do. Right? That's just, just a fact. The Guardian. Johnson ready to sacrifice the majority by withdrawing the whip from the rebels. In other words, give in. And refugee children are at risk from a no-deal Brexit. And there's a picture of um, Meryl Streep pays tribute to murdered journalists. That is all happening on the front page of The Guardian. Daily Express, uh, the reverse of what The Guardian says, Boris vows to boot out Brexit rebels. The Prime Minister demands MPs backing in a crunch week as Gove slaps down Barnier. Now, Gove slapping anybody down, he looks like the most slappable. <laughs> if you could slap a face, it would be Michael <laughs> Gove, irrespective of his politics. Nothing to do with that. It's just purely how he looks, and it's probably unfair to say it. Uh, Megan's dad, please let me see your little Archie. Uh, and Dame Barbara's plea for more social care help for people with mental illness, and she's not in, in good shape herself. Daily Mail, back me or I'll sack you. The Prime Minister is warning the rebels as they threaten to block no deal. And third time lucky, Anthea is to ready. Anthea Red, and not Anthea, Anthea Turner. Turner. Turner is to wed again after a five month romance. Is it important? You've had about, you've had about 15 relationships <laughs> and that. I mean, is it important how long you're with somebody to, to get to know them? Depends how many times she's been married, I guess. It's third time. Oh, third. Mm, it's not as many as usual, is it? No, <laughs> no. I can't give any any practical advice in this area <laughs> at you all. Got married after five months, so. Um, no, no. Mm, You're not convinced. No. <laughs> yeah, think no. about that one no. a long time. No, that I think no. It's always been more than a year. Oh well, that's all right. Well, apparently not. Well, yeah. uh, maybe I should have waited. I should have married within three weeks. Maybe Daily Telegraph. The Prime Minister warns rebel MPs. Back me or be sacked, and heart checks available on the high street. Uh, the Metro newspaper, a picture of of Cara thing. Ah, do you? It's a it's tough changing a Cara career 
she says, because she's now a Hollywood actress because she's pretty. Is she, is she a great actress? Cara, what's her second name? Devil Ignignignig. I don't even know what she's what been in. Devil Ignignignig. What's she been in? Carol Devil Ignignig. <laughs> um, she's she's a she's a like a runway model with very. She's in the like a Boots Eye commercial at the moment with funny. <laughs> That's all she's hair. been she's in. She's just a model. <laughs> no, she's she's making she's making movies now and she's telling you, oh, woe is me, how difficult it is for me to be. Watch a, what would have seen her in though? I've seen her. I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to Google. But she has been. She's in, been in that many. She's been you in. You can't a, even think of. She's the, been in anything. No, she's <laughs> been. In, she's been in lots. I just can't think. Because I wouldn't well, that watch. Might bring her down a I wouldn't too. watch Nobody her. She's been in. She's, she's been, been in the boots advert. <laughs> she's been in the boots. Advert. It might not be boots, but it's. Uh, it's a, she's just a hair commercial or something. She's one of the big modern faces of of modelling, and she's getting more and more into movies. Because she's a module, and is she a great actress? She, she's cute, and more movies than not have. I'll tell you, she's in. she was the she was the model in P.S. Brosnan's Thomas Crown Affair, playing his stepdaughter. Still not the wiser. <laughs> I'm not the wiser either. <laughs> oh, there you go. At least I tried. Ready, steady, chaos. It says about Brexit, and that's, that's about right. Information newspaper, Fury at Gove, warning on Commons no deal vote. And the Financial Times, Labour would cost UK companies 300 billion by shifting shares to staff. I think it'd be wonderful if you worked for a company that said, we think you're so good at what you do, whatever it is, whether you're a welder or a pipe fitter or a, a, a factory worker, for them to say we're going to give you shares at the end of each year. If they've got so much money, they should do that anyway, I think. I mean, if they've got billions in the bank, why yeah. not share it out? I am, I am absolutely in agreement. However, uh, I hope Mrs. Bauer's listening. It says <laughs> <laughs> 300 billion by shifting shares to staff. I think you probably just cost us. <laughs> cost us your share or two there. Anyway, that's what's happening in the press. That is the blah you'll find in your newspapers tomorrow as we move on to find out the blah that the team's put together. Starting off with you then, Nick, what's, uh, what are you thinking, talking, and what have you been uh, interested by? Have you, Well, I got told about this story, and I thought it was... I thought, well, you know when it's like Chinese whispers and someone tells you something, you think, yeah. surely that's not right. Now, there's a guy in um, Westport, Massachusetts, who's been dubbed... Where? Where, where about some about I can't see it. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, he's been it's dubbed... where Karen <laughs> Devil and Mindy comes from. He might not, they might know each other. He's been dubbed Thumb Boy because he's got a five-inch thumb. <laughs> <laughs> now, to me, for people these days with a, these massive iPhones and stuff, that's great, that, because you don't have to... Use a five-inch thumb? Five-inch thumb, that is a, doesn't oh, look real, does uh, it? It no, looks stretched, no. But, but yeah, all these other fingers are normal size, but yeah, he's got Blame me, he's going to get a lift when he needs one, isn't he? Just one thumb. Just one thumb. The other oh. one's all right. He's got like a, a three-inch stubby thumb. It looks like, like we have. Harry Potter's uh, wand thing. <laughs> <laughs> it? Looks like Harry Potter's <laughs> wand thing. But and, yeah, I mean, that's a have... long thumb. Isn't it? It's nearly the same size as my arm. But that's, that's going to be worse for you to... to, to thing with because if you the size of phones these days though you just yeah right okay <laughs> maybe me not a stump I'll have you to probably like turn the get... telly over so now on the couch this is an honest question it may not seem like it is but it is an honest question how long is your thumb how, well <laughs> have you got a part of your body that's bigger than the other one whatever it is mind I'm going to I'll probably get wrong with this but one of the girls that works for me I, always, I call her finger toe because I the finger in from my big toe is longer than all the rest. And she She's got a finger on her toes. And I said, well, one day I'm sure you could eat pizza with that, that toe. It's huge. It's She's got long. a big toe. Yeah, it's like his toe. Freaky yeah. people out there, haven't we? Uh, there but I, it's good. you say it's a good thing. Ah, for it's good to be if different. If he wants to use his phone, but I, it does look a bit odd. It just looks downright peculiar because it's actually longer than his fingers. Yeah. So if you look at the, how you, 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 an average hand looks, your thumb's right down the bottom. His thumb would be past the top of his big finger. Yeah. That's just, that's downright peculiar. Hollywood McShane, you're going to finish us off and stay. Well, this is about swingers parties. Now, I'm not sure if you've been to any of these two, but uh, what's the worst thing? I'm scared of bumming into my ex wives. <laughs> oh, imagine. <laughs> there you go. Well, this is the, the most cringy thing that could ever happen. Oh. Um, Mandy's wife went 
Right. Um, and he was looking around and he recognised the dress. He went, oh, my daughter's got one like that. <gasps> and it was actually his daughter and her husband at the same swingers party. Oh, my God. Um, is your mum? I your know, dad? imagine. I know, but the thing is now, he's turned to advice because now she won't pick the phone up to him and stuff like that, just totally avoiding him. Well, the daughter. Uh-huh. Did he go and knock on her door? Well, I know apparently they left, him and his wife left, but she's tried to get in contact to talk about it, but she's just blanking him, basically. It would be embarrassing. How do you start that conversation off? But presumably she's going, she and her husband, the yeah. daughter, mm-hmm. are going for the same thing that the mum and dad's Yeah, so that's probably the embarrassing, cringeworthy yeah. part. I'm glad it wasn't a dark it room they met in. And you no, know, imagine. Have you, have you ever been in that? I don't know whether you've ever been in a situation because I've been in at a party like this. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it's you're talking about cringy, cringy moments. And when I was a kid, I, my parents had a tell. They were talking technology. This actually fits in beautifully. My parents had a telly in their bedroom. I didn't have a telly in my room, which was just across the upstairs landing, two two up, two down, I mean, the standard terrace. Uh, so I would hear me dad on a Saturday night, and you'd hear the match of the day theme, and you'd think, oh, I wish I could watch that. And then you're wide awake, and you're, you're trying to catch who's playing and who's scoring the goals. So one night, I decided, kind of commando style, although not naked, um... <laughs> In me little pajemi gym jams. Now, I'm 11, probably, and I thought, what I'll do is I'll wait till they're in bed and then I'll creep, I'll push the door open just enough for me to get in and I'll creep under their bed, turn around so that I'm at the end of the bed where the telly is so I could watch the football and then when it's finished, i creep back out again. Well, what I didn't expect was me mum and dad to start actually doing the do, uh, using Match of the Day as a cover, I presume, to, to you know, the, yeah. so you didn't hear any noises. And I was under the bed as the bed started to push down on me shoulders and me head. And I'm thinking, if my dad caught me in this situation, I would be flayed. I would be nailed to the outside so of the building. So did you have to wait there? So, well, what I thought was, because they were involved in in the jousts of Venus, let's just call it that, I thought, now's the time to creep the hell out of here and not creak and not make the door make any kind of noise and get into bed and pretend it never happened. But it was like, then, I wasn't listening to see... It. Well, I was listening to see who scored. I was listening I was listening to, to hear the other noises and it was just, ah, you just shouldn't. That is cringy that is, well, I know. Yeah. What, what's the cringiest? The day's never been the same <laughs> but what, yeah, yeah, I think I've walked in on parents before. Really? Like, yeah. Walked straight back out though. It's like, yeah. But they didn't see, luckily. They didn't see you? They didn't see me. Did yours? No, oh. no. <laughs> I mean, even, I told my parents the story when I was, when they were probably about 65, 70, and they just went purple. Because uh, to yeah. them, even when I was 11, they were getting on because I was. I, they were old parents for me when I... So, I mean, they were uh, keeping the fire alive, I suppose, as, as best they could. But it was just a, a scary and cringy place to be. So if anybody's got any great cringy stories, give me a call right now on 0191 488 3188. What's the cringiest situation you've ever been in Nicholas, waiting for your call right now, and that is loosely what we Le- 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 That's Kara Devlin <laughs> Nick Nick paying me back for that. It is. That's loosely what we describe as the blah. Call Alan Robson's Night Owls now. 0191 488 3188. This is real life conversation with the voice of the North. Greatest hits radio. Yeah, spread the word and uh, a lot of other people sending texts and tweets and please continue to do that. We're still looking to get a few cringes. Uh, what's the cringiest situation you've ever been in? First of all, the Fognogs talking about old toys and they say Etch-a-Sketch loved that. And also Fuzzy Felt. What happened to them, says Lynn. Now, the Fuzzy Felt used to be a real passion of mine. Now, I don't know how many of you even know what a fuzzy felt was. It was a piece of felt. 
that's a, a type of cloth. And uh, because of the nature of the cloth, if you had other pieces of felt, you could push it onto the felt and it would stay where you put it. So if you had a, a star and you had some blue felt, ooh, that's the sky. So you could put stars in the sky or planets or the moon or a half moon, all that kind of stuff. And you ultimately could make pictures. You could make little people, cats and dogs, and, and on your fuzzy felt. And you'd have all of these different shapes cut out so that your imagination could kind of run rampant. I don't know whether the fuzzy felt's still there remotely, but thank you very much to Fog Nogs. Also, you know, earlier we had that uh, that uh, video master, the thing that we talked about. Um, well, Jenny said that she thought it was called a woolly willy. And Jenny says, I found woolly willy <laughs> on Google. I'm just not sure how to send it to you. I know you thought I was joking, but look it up. Now, you say, rather like vaginal steaming, Jenny, woolly willy's another thing that I'm just not going to put into a works computer because these things do come back to bite you. Uh, and also, we've been talking a little bit about things in the news. There's a story about the Queen not being prosecuted, like Andrew was talking about before. Apparently, the Queen was dressed in like a gilet in a headscarf, and she was just, just out for a walk on the estate at Balmoral, and she looked housewifey, let's just put it that way. And a group of American tourists failed to recognise her and came up and, and said, oh, do you live here? And the Queen says, oh, yeah, yes. <laughs> you can imagine, you go, oh, yes, I do. I live hereabouts. And uh, the Americans just kept chatting to her. She says, oh, have you ever met the Queen? And the Queen said, no, but this policeman has, pointing to her, obviously the policeman has to follow her around, and uh, the group apparently then moved on, having no idea who they'd bumped into uh, on the Balmoral Estate up there in Aberdeenshire. So uh, the Queen, nice quip, just just ready to deliver, and well done to her. So let's crack on. Let's go to Blake Law. We got Melissa there. Hello, Melissa. Hi, Alan. Hello, Darren. How are you? I'm fine. Good. Honestly, I've so missed you. On uh, Alan Robson. Right. So missed you, like, through the week. Sure, I bet. Well, let's hope you get back there soon. That's that's the that's the target. Oh, I know. Um, the last time I rang you was actually, I won a ticket for the Harry Potter premiere. Oh, can you remember right. that? I can, absolutely. Yeah, when I was telling you about my neighbour, who are gay, who are having sex, like, every Thursday <laughs> downstairs. <laughs> I don't know if you can remember that. I can remember that. There's, can you? It's not too many calls we've had like that in the in the history <laughs> of the show. Oh, well, I've just built up the bottle again and ring you back. Brilliant, um, good. Just to say, like, how much we missed you. And also, um, one of my family members passed away. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, and I remember you used to play this lovely song yes. every time. Could you, could you tell us what it was? Yes. Um, it's a, a song by Joe Cocker, and the, the song's called Take Me Home. And it is Take a, a beautiful... Beautiful song for if you're thinking like funerals or or just something to give the rest of the family a bit of heart in a tough yeah. time. I remember it did have something to do with um, crossing a bridge or something like that. There's a bridge over the rainbow. Yes, absolutely. Yes, beautiful, so, beautiful bit of work it is. Joe Cocker was it? Joe Cocker, take me home. Oh, buddy. Well, yes. honestly, Alan, it's lovely to hear your voice again. Thank me you, and my um, husband are over the moon because yeah. we listen to you all the time. Well, thank you very um, much. And you're just absolutely amazing. Well, it's very <laughs> kind. Hey, thanks for being with us. Sir. Thanks for the light. You really appreciate it. Thanks, Mel. Oh, you have a lovely oh, evening and love to the family. Oh, thank you very much. Thanks, Alan. Take care. Bye-bye. Yeah, the clans are beginning to gather big style, which is great. Keep spreading the word. There's, there's a few hapless night owls that haven't quite found us yet. Make sure they do. And make sure you pick up your telephone and give us a call. We've got room to get you on if you'd like to talk. We're looking for cringy things at the moment or the old toys or the just stuff that you can no longer see or get your hands on. Now, I'm going to play you a piece of music that was one of those great disco songs back in the day when I was playing nightclubs and getting people up to uh, 
strut their disco stuff back in the day. And Sister Sledge play any one of their tunes, you could get away with it. And uh, I was talking to one of the Sledges, Johnny Sledge, and about, well, accidents and things that happen to you when you're when you're working as hard as she was. And this is what she had to say. I do remember my sister falling into an orchestra pit. Oh. <laughs> you didn't push her, Joni, did you? <laughs> you know what? I think the good and the bad just make it the greatest experience. Mm. I, it's the truth. I can't even pinpoint something that... Oh, I do remember once we were in Jamaica. Yeah. This was amazing. And um, we had a, some promoters that didn't pay the sound crew. And so the sound crew was backstage threatening to not put the sound on. Uh. And Kim, my sister Kim, ran out on stage, and it was a huge stadium. Uh. And she, she turned, they turned on one mic, and she just said, we want to perform, but they won't turn on the sound because they haven't been paid. She told the whole story. And the place went crazy. But we ended up paying the crew. Um, in order to perform that night, so I guess that was that was one of the, yeah, just the sh- most interesting things. Shows how much you care about your audience. You weren't going to let them down. That's a beautiful thing. This is real life conversation with the voice of the North. This is Night Owls with Alan Robson. Call o one nine one four double eight three one double eight. Greatest Hits Radio. Time for our third clue as well. Now, remember, we are seeking one of the world's most common surname. Not just a British surname, one of the world's most common surnames. The first clue, the best hair colour on earth, in my opinion, or a tasty spice. Second clue, someone who has strong rules and makes you stick to them. What are they? Third clue, Eminem's weird hit about a crazy listener with choruses from Dido. What was the song called? Eminem's weird hit about a crazed listener with choruses from Dido. You got three clues down, one more clue to come, and don't enter until you hear all four clues because you can't. You haven't got all four answers if you don't know all four clues. Uh, Daniel Screen, incidentally, is uh, the thing I failed to mention, was he's just ordered two of those new Night Owl mugs. And uh, so thank you very much again for that. And if you want to text, text the word Alan, A-L-A-N, plus your message to 61054, 61054, 61054, and you will get that through. And we have, I said we were going up the mountains, and we indeed we are. We have Sean from Concert next. Hi, Sean. Hello, mate. How are you doing? I'm very well. Thank you very much. Well, well, I've got two quick things, right? Okay. One, one's about Strictly Come Papa, I call it. It's Ooh, what's the matter? Why are they wanting, the, they wanting same-sex couples dancing with each other? Right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Now, when we were when we were seventeen and fifteen year olds, we used to go to discos and we used to headbang like you say, and we yeah, used to yeah. headbang with all the lads, and yeah. you know what I mean. The lasses used to headbang with the so other lads. So that's same sex dancing right there, Sean. Exactly, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> I just, I mean, the, it, the programs are loaded, Papa. Anyway, you know what I mean. Well, a lot of people get a kick out of it. I mean, it's, it might not be your thing or my thing, but it, a lot of people like that. Or I think Chris Ramsey's in there. One of ours is in the uh, the current brood, I think. That, mm-hmm. But what, this this idea about it, do you not want to watch two two ladies dancing together? Or two... I have no problem with that man. It's just it's the program itself on it. It's a load of. Why do you, you, know I mean? why'd you not it's, like it? It's teaching people who can't they, dance to dance, isn't it? It's way making a proud of themselves. I mean, they get paid well paid for it. You know what I mean? I'll bet. The BBC say they don't get paid for it, but of course they. Of course, I get paid for it. I'm just thinking I mean, if, if, you, if, I, if I had my way, I'd get rid of Strictly and I'd get mm. rid of EastEnders because they're the worst actors in the world. Blame me. You know what I mean? That's that's heads up, right? Okay. <laughs> I'm just thinking though, that if, would, if it you would save the save the BBC a lot of money, you know, if give the, it would give the seventy-five year olds the right the TV back. Because I'm just thinking, if you and I dance cheek to cheek, 
Oh, Christ. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for your enthusiasm there. I'm just thinking that our, our, our beard stubble would act like Velcro and we wouldn't be able to get, a, be able to get it apart. Out. I just got a shave, thank God, yesterday. <laughs> I cannot see you dancing with the ginger man. Mate. <laughs> yeah, it's just what everybody's been waiting for all their lives. Could, I mean, could, couldn't dance with the gingerbread man. No, well, there you go. But, uh, bottom, <laughs> bottom line, though, do you not think that this is strictly doing a positive thing for society so that if anybody... Well, I think, uh, to be quite honest, I mean, it's going to be a family thing, you know, at the end of the day. But there's going to be kids watching it, and they're going to say, "Where, where how come they're dancing? How, it's right. never been done before, you know what I mean? Mm. It's going to, I th- it could, you know, their minds could go. Mm. The, th- the thing is, and I don't know whether it's just me, but I used to, I remember my mum and dad used to be, uh, like ball, not ballroom dancers, but they did the old fashioned dancey poo, and they'd occasionally go to like tea dances in the afternoon where with the old pensioners, and they all get together. And uh-huh. if if you go there because women wear men out, there's less of them, and uh-huh. there's like ninety women and three blokes, and the women have to dance with women, otherwise they'd never get a dance. Well, at my, all. my my mother and uh, dance we should. She brought you into Irish dancing in the Irish club. You know, she right. brought you out to do it. Yes, she did. That's but true. You know what I mean? At the end of the day, I mean, they dance with each other there, you know what mm-hmm. I mean? Yes. So I don't, I don't understand what the problem is, but the problem is that the binds of kids these days mm. are going to turn around and say, wait, What's what's this all about? Like, you know what I mean? But you see, the more it's shown on telly, surely the better it is for for people to to get used to it and not to be so kind of free. I mean, like I say, I've got nothing against it. You know what I mean? But just just the making so much prats of ourselves. You know what I mean? I think it's the worst (laughs) television going. Like, but you see, reality TV is that though, isn't it? It's 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 going to go into a Big Brother house where we can see. You're behaving like a prat. Uh, yeah. Oh, I tell you what, why do you gonna go in the jungle and we'll make you eat a eat a <laughs> eat an ostrich's anus and see how you like that? <laughs> that is kind of the idea, though, isn't it? Of the reality. Uh, yeah, that's true. But the, I've got another thing. The quick oh, what's thing. that then? Boris Johnson. He's blackmailing his MPs now. You know. Yeah, he is absolutely. So what, what do you think of that? Then? Uh, he's making. It up as he goes along, like he always has. I mean, he, he made up the figures for the NHS for the side of the bus. Exactly. Uh, you see, this is why I don't understand. If somebody tells the kind of... Why don't they just revoke it? Malicious. Oh, just if somebody him. tells malicious lies, you would think, well, why did they vote him in as Prime Minister then? And then they exactly. would well, be... Did they really think that he was what would unite the country? And we'd all think, oh, we really like the cut of his jib. I don't understand it, but but then again, do you think he's a dictator. A dictator. Do you I don't think he's. A I don't know whether he's a dictator. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he doesn't like Ireland, so he doesn't like. Know about the dictators, man. No, no. Uh, no. But, uh, <laughs> but uh, at the end of the day, you know, he's gonna, he's not going to get nothing off the uh, the backstops there to stop, like. I think so too. Yeah. There's no way he's going to get a deal, like. So what the hell is he? What's he? What's he going to kick his MPs out for? Well, what he what he seems to be trying to do was to to change. Either the, you back me, or I'll kick you out, and that's what he's going to try and do. Change the rules without having the power to change them is the is the reality of it. But uh, time will tell. Who knows? Who knows, man? Have you got anything in your hat? Or do you yes, not have ev- a hat anymore? We we do, but it's everybody that rings in goes in. Oh, right, just right, just right. people that ring in, they go in for the t-shirt. So uh, fingers crossed for you right. tonight. Thanks right. very much, Sean. Take care, son. Thanks, Around man. Bye bye. Yeah, we we're doing it uh, that way instead. And uh, if and when we go five days, we'll take another look at that, and I'll see if I can get some stuff. We have oh, a cringe moment, nice one from Bob Rain. He says. Uh, my cringe moment was I was up a ladder cleaning a window and there in all of its glory was an old woman completely stark as on her bedpan. It's the one memory I wish I could erase. <sighs> With you there, Bob. And Tim says, I've, I've signed you up to Strictly Secret 
which is always advertising discreet rendezvous. After your comment to Linda about keeping her legs up and all your ex-wives, I thought it very appropriate. Tim, it's no. I will bump into somebody that I know, if you know what I'm saying. So, ooh, I'll save you money. <laughs> ben Mabon. Um, things we still have, the old technology, all of that. Uh, it says, Alan, and I still have a lot of vinyl, old house classics as well. I play them regularly uh, as well. Love the show. Thank you, Ben. There is Ben. Let's cut across to Sue, who is currently, I think, in Kings Lane. Hello, Sue. No, I'm not in Kings Lane anymore. <laughs> I'm, I'm in Washington. You're in Wishy. OK, well, yeah, good to have I'm you back. back. Good. Back home. Excellent. But, um, yeah, well, I rang you last week, didn't I? And the whole, the the like break with the family was good. And good. I mean, I don't know, I don't know if you've seen the photos. I've sent some yes, photos. Yes, brilliant. Yes. Yeah. Um, no, no. Tonight I've sent some photos. <laughs> um, we were supposed to be coming home last Tuesday. Right. And we had all the things ready to pack in the car, and it was about eight eight o'clock in the morning, and I. I so I'll just get up and get myself sorted. Right. I heard heard my mum shout, Sue. Uh, I ran down. So I've never run so fast in my life. And she was leaning up against the stair banister. Mm. I was going, what's the matter? And she's gone. And I couldn't make out. I thought she said she'd had a funny turn, like mm, yeah. a bit fainty or something. Uh-huh. I said, mum, what's the matter? So she lift, look, like looked up as she had a gash on her nose. It was oh. pouring with blood. Oh, no. Um, she had a bump. On her head, the size of a tennis ball, and she says, "What's she? What's she like?" I said, "I'm going to phone the ambulance." She went, "No, no, I'll press the thing on my wrist because it's the telecare thing." All right, yes, sir. So we waited for them, and um, and then they called the ambulance, right. and she was compass mentis and was like, "I can't go to the hospital, not in what I'm wearing. I can't wear this t-shirt. It's filthy. I need a clean t-shirt." So we was up and about, and my daughter ran ran in the bedroom and got her a clean t shirt. Oh, she was adamant she yeah. wasn't going going to go in the ambulance, yeah. like in a in a scrap, you know. <laughs> and um, and I was going, look, mum, sit down. They told me to hold this on your nose to stop it bleeding because yeah. she's on blood thinners. Oh, blame me, right? Yeah. Yeah, and she would not sit, and I said, sit down. Anyway, the ambulance came, and they took her in, and oh, I mean, I sent sent an email with the photos. Honestly, she we was in the hospital for five hours wow. where she had scans and 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 um, X rays. Right. But luckily, everything oh. come back clear. Thank heavens for that, right? But oh my God, what a way to end the holiday! It isn't and it funny that she seems that she wasn't so worried about a snack. She no, was she, she was worried about, about making sure she had the right t shirt on. Yeah. What she was wearing, what shoes she was wearing. No. And, like and I'm, fa- I'm fairly sure the doctors and the nurses probably didn't bat an eye to, well, to what she had on in the first place. But it's it's one of those things since you're little. Since I was mm-hmm. about five year old, I was my mother was always saying, and make sure you've got clean underwear on in case you get knocked yeah. down and you've got to go to hospital. Yeah. It's yeah. kind of forced into us, isn't it, when you yeah. when you're little. Oh my but, I'm glad she's all right though. I mean, when, does she still look a bit battered? Oh God! Um, well, the last uh, if you look on the emails, you see the photos. Right. There's one where she's got like the thing on her nose when we first went to the hospital, and then um, when we got home, and then the next day it was just spread all over it. Right. She looked like I don't know what she looked like to be honest, but since then she said it's all black under her chin and that and on her cheek, you know. Right. But uh, but today she's had us worried because. Um, Obviously, I'm up here and she's there, and then she said, I've got like fluters in my eye. And oh, I said, right. oh, Yeah, the, the little black um, yeah. bottles and that she said. Yeah. I said, Oh, mum, I said, I think you're going to have to go, go and see the doctor. Right. She went, No, no, because she's ever so stubborn. No, no, they'll go. I said, Mother, you're going to have to go. So I got on the phone to my brother and told him. He said, Look, I said, Right, I'll get an appointment sorted for her and get her. Get I just her. felt sorry for her because that picture that you sent in when she's in her clean pink top but yeah. she's sitting there with like a, a matchbox on her nose looking like she's yeah. she's been in yeah. the ring with Mike Tyson oh you've seen it now yeah, absolutely. and the third one the third one is on the Wednesday but what a day her end of holiday oh. but how she did it she um because my mum's always up the crack of dawn right and and she was hanging um the washing out uh-huh. and she tripped over a flower pot 
<laughs> grabbed the washing line to stop her from falling. Ah. That snapped, and she face-planted the drain in the garden. She, mind like, you, the, like the, the weird thing about it, and I'm glad she's all right, is that on the picture when the, you took the third picture where she's been at home for a little while, uh-huh. her, her wounds now match her T-shirt. Yes. I mean, her face is like pink, yes, and your T-shirt's completely pink. That's what we said. Unbelievable! Yeah. But it's it's awful. It's 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 really sad. I find it so hard when things like this happen. You know, sure. because I'm up here and I can't go and check on her. You know, yeah, so that's tough. it's really hard. It is tough. So. Hey, but at least she's she's, she's going to survive, and the nose wasn't yeah. broken because that would have started off. No. The no, whole neck was, of stuff, wouldn't it? I mean, all her eyes all swelled, and the left eye literally closed. And I thought, oh my god, I bet she's broken eye sockets or something, or broken her nose. But there was none of that. that was, everything mm. was like, I, I can't, I can't believe. I mean, you, you know what a manhole cover's like, don't you? A drain cover. Absolutely, of course. I mean, like, it could have killed her. Could have. You know? No question. She's so lucky. I think head, the dad head, was head wounds anyway, but I mean, talk about a head wound. This was a face wound. She fell, you know, like yeah. face on. So, mm-hmm. no, she's very, very lucky. But give her me love, Sue, and thank you for I coming will. on. Amazing. Yeah. Bless you, darling. Thank, thank, thank you very much. Thank you, Alan. Take Bye-bye. care. Bye bye. Oh, how awful. And I mean, it, she does look like she's really. Smacked it good style. Chris Black's just sent me uh, some pictures in as well. And he says, Alan, when I was a kid, I was obsessed with my Tommy turning turbo. Right. Um, now, a Tommy, T U M Y, turning, like turning but without the G, turbo. And it's a, it's a car driving thing where you've got a steering wheel, you've got all the gadgets that a car would have, including an ignition. And you've got like a, a a gear stick on your right and a screen where you are driving the car on the screen along the road. The Mighty Metro, um, until I got my Mighty Metro Scale Electric, that was the next thing. And he says, uh, PG, PS, rather, no, not P, should be PG, <laughs> PS. And he says, it's possible vaginal steaming may make you relax and ease cramping like a heating pad does. But evidence it clean it cleanses your vagina or uterus, improves fertility, and balances hormones is purely anecdotal. Vaginal steaming may increase your risk of a vaginal infection by altering the bacteria ecosystem. Chris, the truck driver from Wiles End, getting in there where no other listener did. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Chris. All the best. And uh, Gan Canny, well, you out. Um, Tim Leonard says, what you wearing? The caller just on reminded me of my late dad who fell out the loft and broke his leg. He insisted on having a shave and changing his clothes before the ambulance arrived with his broken leg. My mum changed his clothes and passed him the shaver. Says Tim, no, that's how we're taught to be. Can't possibly go to uh, a hospital with dirty kegs. I don't think so. Now, last week, we mentioned it was 60 years since the beginning of Tamla Motown. <gasps> Love Tamla Motown. But what was the number one song as voted by people on the best Motown song of all time? Stevie got it. So many other songs from Motown. I want you back, Jackson 5, Mama's Pearl, Forgotten Classic, ABC, Marvin Gates tunes, Four Tops Temptations, even old Marv Johnson, I'll pick a rose for my rose while I play me Motown. Uh, Shanice, I love your smile playing. There's so many you could name. And, uh, yeah, just fancy to... I don't know, a medley of like 200 of those tracks all wedged together. Play me what an afternoon that would be. And we have a fourth clue coming your way. Now, we've got about half an hour of the show left, proper. If you want to get on, you better be picking up your telephone. I'm going to talk to Kelly in two seconds. Before that, I'm going to give you all four clues. Now, there's a word you can put on the end of all four answers. There is a word you can put on the end of all four answers. 
and it is one of the world's most common surnames. The first clue, the best hair colour on earth in my opinion, or a tasty spice, or a tasty spice girl, I suppose. Second clue, someone who has strong rules and makes you stick to them, like that dancing competition on television. It is, there would be this S word, someone who has strong rules and makes you stick to them. Third clue, Eminem's weird hit about a crazy listener with choruses from Dido. What was the song called? And the fourth clue, where cows get milked and farmers sell it. Where cows get milked and farmers sell it. It's not a farm. Well, it's a kind of farm. It's a, this word. You've got four words now. There's a word you can stick on the end of all four. And that word is one of the world's most common surnames. What's it? Whip out me what's it if you can. You've got about 25, 30 minutes to do it on 0191 488 Same number to get on air as well. 0191 488 Now, Kelly's with us. She's in Dunstan. Hello, Kelly. Hello, Alan. Hello, you, darling. What are you talking about tonight? Well, I've just rang up because uh, I wonder if anyone talks about the kids going back to school. Were you desperate for that to, <laughs> to happen now? Or? No, no, I'm not. That's why I was asking because everybody I've, I've spoke to and, well, I spe- speak to any six weeks, they always say they're desperate for the kids go to go back and I never am. <laughs> so what is it that, that's so nice about having them around? I would have thought they must add massively to the amount of work you got to do. Well, I work in a nursery, so I work right. in the holidays anyway, usually. Ah, right, I see. But I do come home, but I've... This is really sad. I've made a list of pros and cons while I've been waiting. <laughs> right. That's quite sad, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> so it's quite sad. Um, the one I think that people hate is hearing the word mom all the time yes. and dad yeah, but they but... do usually shout mum don't they no, I think mum yeah, you, you take the bulk of it because dads I think dads tune out and uh, I, I, I don't know. think mums yeah. I don't think mums can but I know a lot of blokes so they just kind of they just can't hear it anymore they've just <laughs> they've put it in a place in their head so they can completely ignore it even when I come from from work all I hear is mum mum yeah and I'm like, for God's sake. <laughs> <laughs> so what was uh, it, though, that you were... Uh, cause give me give me a pro, then. What, what's so good about it? Um, I've got... Um, pros are... Hold on. The time off. But that's for me personally, sorry. Right, sure. Because some people... Uh, spending family time so, because the kids are off school, so you've got the full six weeks with them. Right, so explain them what you do in the family time. Because what I've noticed about some of the, the families that live near where I live uh-huh. is the kids play out when it's light and then go in. And I presume uh, it's just like, well, you're not at school, so stay out as long as you can. And then you come back in roughly when school would be finished anyway. Uh, oh, that was a joy when you were a kid, though, nowadays. No, abs- no abs- <laughs> I get that, absolutely. But it's the family time, because people are always saying, oh, kids need more family time. They need to do special things that'll let them remember special times with their mums and dads. Uh, what, what have you done that, that would give a kiddie uh, that kind of memory, then? Well, we've got certain things. Eh? We've got the, do you know the Chronicle, where they've had the three things watch. You can do in the north in the holidays. Summer. Yes, that's it. Uh-huh. It's been great. That's, that. the, that's really useful yes. for people who can't get out and about. They don't mm. drive or yeah. they haven't got much money and stuff like that. Perfect. There's free things in our local area and yes. things. Yes, yeah, that's great. It does come in really handy. No, I mean it even might... points you to, to like local fairs and local uh, things yeah. that's happening in, in on your neck of the woods as well. Very, very mm-hmm. handy. And but the, this is the thing: little things used to. I mean, to me, a family day was whenever I had me mum and dad to myself because it doesn't happen often. You know, your dad would be at work, or your mum be at the shops, or you'd mm-hmm. want to play for. So to get the, it sounds the simplest thing in the world just to get the family round the table. But it, mm-hmm. it's not really, is it? You know, with every with all the pressures. No, it's definitely it's definitely not. But what I've found this six weeks, because it's the first time I've done, but I have been working throughout them the odd day, because mm-hmm. I said I would. Yeah. 
But my husband was like, oh, I can't be, I can't be bothered to do that. <laughs> but do you know what I thought of him? <laughs> now when you forced the dad. <laughs> right. He actually really enjoyed himself. So what was it that you ended up doing then? We went to, um, where we go? I actually, I forced him to get on the boat. We went to Flamingo Land. Oh, brilliant. That's great. He doesn't go on rides on out like that because he doesn't like out like that. Okay. But I forced him to go like, we got on the bus, we got on the thing and all that, and I forced him to go, he was like humming and hawing all the way there. <laughs> when we're going to be there, he was wasting the burn. <laughs> and we got there, and he had a brilliant time, he didn't even go on a raid. Right. No, but you've but, got the, you've got the animals, and you'll, they probably saw you in the van having a ball. Uh-huh, and that's it, the thing, you what's, don't have what's to not go that far, though, do you? Nah, not at you all. You can just go to... I mean, well, there's light the water valley. There's there's some roundabouts in South Shields for heaven's sake, isn't there? You know. Uh-huh. I mean, I live. I don't live far from the metro centre. There's just a little pond called Acre Pond. I don't know if you know it. I do. Yes, absolutely. But we've been down to feed the ducks. Lovely. Just I, went down to feed the ducks, and thing. that was all it was. It was champion. Had a little picnic. Yeah. Sorted. No, a friend of mine said that the uh, he wanted to take his kids to. It was somewhere like a a Bitha. We'll take the beds to Ibiza. We'll have a we'll have a week of sun and da da. And his partner got work, so it couldn't happen. And they went, oh, that'll that'll ruin the Ben's holiday. Where the following day, the two of them took the the child just down to the coast, which is like mm-hmm. ten minutes away from where they live. They f- oh. fed the seagulls, fed the ducks on the pond. He got a few tiddlers in a jam jar. Mm-hmm. Old school stuff, really, and the uh-huh. the band thought it was the greatest. I've been on me holidays. Should see what yeah. I've got, you know. And he's got, all he's got to three minnows, about mm-hmm. half half a dozen bars of rock, and he's happy as Larry. You know, it, exactly. it just just give time to the to the kids. That's what that's what they, they want to be. It's all about the memories. Though. Doesn't have to be big, does it? Nah, not at all. Now you were spot on. I love the fact though that you had to drag your lad to have a good time. <laughs> <laughs> Blame me, he needs a shove. What's the matter with him? He's not like a massive, oh, I just bother what being and what's racing kind of bloke. <laughs> <laughs> but he does love he does love being when he gets there. You've just got to take him there, though, Alan. Yeah, by the, by the like, nose. Stop whinging. Get the, on with it. Have I got time for the cons? Yeah, not? of course, please. Are do you it. sure? Yeah. Um, uniforms. Oh, Ooh, I know, I know. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> um... Obviously, you know what I'm going to say, cost money. And you get no help. And sometimes they'll say to you, you've got to have the school's badge on and the only place you can buy the badge is this shop where it's 14 mm-hmm. quid and it's not the one pound ninety nine you get if you've got uh-huh. a blazer from George and Asda or whatever. Well, now, do cheeky. you know something? It's obviously a well-known shop in the North East mm-hmm. where a lot of people go for the stuff. Yeah. And one... Um, in primary school, I have to order online. I can't go to that shop. Give over, really? Oh, uh huh. I, rem- I remember my mother school. taking me to that shop when I was just a, you know, you've you, you, you got to get the vest, and the only place you can get the vest is this shop. Mm-hmm. And I just thought you could buy a jacket, like a, mm-hmm. a blazer style jacket, anywhere, and you could get them for coppers, but you had mm-hmm. to buy this one for like, at the time it was four times what you could buy them for in a, an ordinary shop. And you're thinking, this is good. This is a, it's a rip, total rip, isn't it? And I've ordered my daughter a one online, what the school says I have to buy. Right. And I got an email yesterday saying, sorry, it's not going to arrive in time. So I ah. had to go to Asda and get a record again Shh. today. And I'm thinking, well, what's the difference? I could have done that anyway. No, Absolutely. It just shows you what, what what a rip it is. I don't know what deal this shop's got with the rest of the, with the rest of the schools across the region, but they they seem to have everybody in their pocket, don't they? Well, I wasn't that annoyed, but the biggest thing I was annoyed at when I went to pay for my oldest uniform. Mm. Well, I went in and my husband had said, "Jesus, busy, yeah." And she went, oh, yeah, no, because um, a lot of children don't go to school at a certain school, so they've offered them an incentive. If they go to school, they get a free uniform. Now, you see, to to me, I I think if a school wants somebody to wear a uniform, they should either provide one or they should should at least have a facility at the school where if you buy through the school, you get them like a third of the price or something. It shouldn't be you have to go to this one where you pay five times the price. 
Uh-huh. I don't so get that either, at all. The, the point of that is, you don't offer them... This should remain kids what school does. You can't say, well, you can't guarantee if you give a child a uniform, they're going to turn up. No, you that's... You know what I mean? <laughs> that's for sure. <laughs> Must move on, Kel, but bless you, darling. Thanks for coming no on. No problem, Alan. Sorry you take up loads of uh, time. It's never a problem. Never a problem at all. Thank you very much. Uh, it's the Nine Hills and Greatest Hits Radio, where, of course, we have the odd hit and an occasional advert to play. So we're going to do that now.